Friends, my name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Welcome to Whoop Wednesday. Here it be. The Mobula 6 2024 has arrived. Huge shout out to uh, Happy Model for sending this over. Uh, and exclusive news that Jason from Happy Model was cool enough to uh, tell me and uh, allow me to um, share with you beautiful people. Which is that there will be a plug... Uh, a motor plug version of this available in the future soon um no timeline whatsoever but that's super <laughs> like, that is the one thing uh that is the the biggest thing that um i'm sort of upset about with this and yeah that's rad that's super cool for those of us that are flying freestyle or that want to test a lot of stuff for me direct soldering motors is a complete nightmare because i test every single motor i can get my hands on on these to try to find the one with the most power the lightest weight the best throttle curve all the good stuff um so yeah i'm super excited about that and for the racers this one is going to be really great uh because of the direct soldered motors right the racers are looking for every single possible benefit that they can find uh, and pulling the motor plugs and direct soldering the motors, I'm sure has a tiny, tiny, tiny little benefit. And yeah, they're on the clock, so it makes a difference. Uh, but for those of us that fly freestyle or for just folks that don't want to take on a, a relatively challenging solder job, right? Like 30 gauge wires, they're a pain. <laughs> like just, it's it's not an easy soldering job. Like if, if, if you're buying this as your first if you're thinking about buying a Mobula 6 2024 as your first build, I would absolutely wait for the uh, the plug version of it. Because eventually you're going to bang up a motor. Uh, these little motors have one millimeter motor shafts, and they're that's just not quite big enough um, for the amount of abuse that you can easily put into one of these things. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to be replacing a motor at some point, and if it's your first rig... And <laughs> being expected to solder 30 gauge wires directly to the to a little tiny tiny whoop AIO, yeah, that's a bit much. So um, very exciting. Thank you, Happy Model, for for understanding that and and uh, and doing that. But tonight we're gonna look at this one, which is the current version, which is you know you can basically think of the two of these as this is the race one, and then the plug one is sort of the freestyle slash everyone else um rig the other thing that i kind of find when it comes to like you know having to direct solder mo motors versus just plug them in is that like if even for those of us that have been soldering for a while if you've got hanging over your head the reality that if you bang up a motor and you have to change the motor out you're gonna have to pull it apart you're gonna have to you know desolder the other one re 
you're signing up for like a minimum of 15 to 20 minutes of work, right? To change a motor. What'll happen is you just won't change the motors when you should. And you'll just run motors that are banged up with jello in the feed or a PID tune that's not as dialed in as it could be because you got a bunch of uh, vibrations coming from one or more uh, beat up motors. Whereas motors with plugs, the only barrier is the cost, right? And, and these little motors are pretty cheap, like less than 10 bucks a motor or 10-ish bucks a motor. It depends on which ones you get, but... Um, so yeah, with the plug-in motors, it's kind of like, oh, you know, th this one motor is starting to get a little bit noisy, get it off. It, it's, there's not this like, um, uh, you know, 15 to 20 to 30 to an hour if, if you're, if you're having a hard time with it, job looming. Um, so yeah, really, really, really happy about that. Um, welcome friends. Who's in the chat? Jamie Lee FPV was first. Hockey Rounds was next. JW, Sketch PV, Troy Prelog, Kevin Sumner, Max Maynard, Michael Kajas, Weebleed FPV is in the house. What's up, Zotech? Uh, we're going to be doing mailbag in a little bit, and there's a big old box from Zotech, which I'm super excited about. Um, Weebleed is a massive supporter, uh, and uh, it is super, super, super appreciated. They have great stuff on their website. Their uh, 300 mAh BT 2.0 bat folded cell batteries are my absolute favorites. Um, they're all the same when it comes to the actual battery, but Weebleed uses a sticker that wraps all the way around and doesn't get all hung up when you put this thing in and out of your frame a thousand times. Um, so it's kind of an insane reason for it to be my favorite battery, but look, the Weebleeds, the Tiny Whoop, the Tattoo, uh, the Quad Gas, the Beta FPV, and there's one or two more uh, manufacturers that sell 300 mAh. Some of them, they say 320 mAh. They're not. They're 300 mAh. Well, I mean, they're all the same batteries. I'll say that. Um, yeah, they're all the same batteries. So a sticker on one, <laughs> right? Like they all kind of cost the same too, I think. Um, so yeah, since there's no differences, there actually is a tiny little difference and it just makes your life a little bit less frustrating um realistically though if you're doing a website uh, if you're doing an order on a website that sells 300 mAh folded cell bt 2.0 batteries snag a bunch right like each time you're doing on a website that sells them get yourself a four pack or a six pack or an eight pack uh because when they are fresh they are magic and having a whole bunch of tiny whoop batteries is really 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 nice um it's it's just yeah kind of can't have too many so uh, Bob Bruce, McMucus, Frank Nicholas, Riot9, Mr. Smithers, FPV, Lucky, uh, Walter Van Den Ord, Free Lojo, Hockey Round, 16 bit FPV, Mr. Dud, Safe Zone, Four Little Pigs, Tommy B, Simon, Douglas Otwell, McMucus, who else do we have in here? Northern Tier, Hector Polanco, Tongue Out FPV, uh, Slocal, or Slocal? Slocal or Slocal? Uh, FPV, Curtis Hayes, Atomic Rebel, Riot 9, Kevin Sumner, uh, Marshmallow... <laughs> There's a story behind that name, Marshmallow Hunters, <laughs> Caden Brewster, Hector Polanco, uh, Mr. Blue Sky, Ethan W, Fun Per Volt, Raging uh, 1337, Elite, uh, Caden Brewster again, Guillermo is in the house, what's up homie, David 4F, Mac FPV, uh, Wakanabe, who else? We're going to leave it there. Fly Tribe Magazine. There we go. That's a good place to leave it. Uh, thanks for coming, friends. We're going to get this thing opened up, plug it into Beta Flight, talk about it, fly it, beat on it, try some different propellers. Um, you know, this has uh, 0702, 28,000 kV motors. I have thousands, like literally thousands of batteries uh, through. 702 motors from 26,000 kV to 36,000 kV and like everywhere in between. So I know exactly what these 702 28,000s are going to be like. Um, the, the, and, and so changing propellers, like I kind of know what to expect, but it'll be an opportunity for you to get to see like how the different props are going to perform. Realistically, there are three main propellers that you're going to want to run on this. Um, the uh, gem fan by blades, the six, uh, the 1210 by blades, the new gem fan ultra lightweight props, 
which we have to do mailbag to get access to. Um, and then the HQ, uh, as I call them, YOLO props. Uh, these are the HQ super ultra lightweight 31 millimeter tri-blades. Um, these are the three propellers that really just demolish all of the rest. Uh, we're going to fly it on the 1208, the Gemfan 1208 uh, tri-blades, which are totally fine, but they just, they, they, the other three prop options are magic. Like, they're actually magic. They're sprinkled with unicorn farts, and um, the 1208s are, are really good, but these other three options are just ridiculous. So uh, we'll get it off of the 1208s pretty quickly. We'll throw a battery through it um, so that you can see how they fly, but then we'll get it to some of these props that, um, that I'm a bigger fan of, and you should see uh, an improvement in the flight performance. Speaking of... I actually need to uh, grab a little bag with the bi blades. I don't have the bi blades handy, but they should be right here. Yeah, all right. Here they go. So we got a fresh set of the uh, the bi blades here out of this bag, and yeah. Uh, but first, we need to get caught up on the chat. If you want to talk to me in the chat, all you got to do is type C I D F P V. If you do that. When I look at your comment, my name will be lit up in orange. You can do this to each other. If you type someone's name into your message uh, and you spell it correctly, for that person, it'll light up in orange. And it's blatantly obvious. And they'll read it. Um, if you want me to test and fly and open this sooner, maybe don't tag me a ton. Um, so, yeah, fair warning. Uh, because I do kind of put the Q&A on the front of these live streams so that we have enough time to really talk through the questions, the the in my opinion, like the most value that I can offer the FPV community is the Q&A part of these live streams. So I always do that first. Uh, we talk through all the questions in enough detail so that you actually know what's going on rather than just a couple word answer. Um, that's how we learn. JW says, are the T-Motor 0802 one and a half millimeter uh, 27,000 kV motors a good alternative until Jesse slash the industry makes an 0802 1.5 3,000? I didn't know that T Motor made a one and a half millimeter motor shaft 802. T Motor 0802, uh, what is it? 27,000, 27,000 kV motor. Uh, they make an 0802 27,000, but it's a one millimeter motor shaft. They do not make a, a one and a half mil motor shaft. Um, and I don't really know much about these. 802s uh they sent me some prototypes of their 803s way back when uh but i've never gotten my hand on these 0802s but with the one mil motor shaft that's kind of a deal breaker for me so yeah th that the answer to your question is no it's not an alternative because it only has a one mil motor shaft um the 802s with the one and a half millimeter uh motor shaft are magical uh, especially on heavier rigs and 75 millimeter rigs because they are heavier um so yeah if there is a one and a half millimeter version of that motor then yes it is absolutely a good alternative because that one and a half mil motor shaft above the bell is a really big deal um but yeah that would be news to me that that they have that uh, Slow Kyle FPV says, can't wait for our one-on-one uh, -on -one to find out all the many things I've been doing wrong. <laughs> we'll talk more about the things you're doing right, brother. Uh, what he's talking about is over on Fiverr, uh, through, w there's a link to it over on CIDFPV.com. Um, I have a couple of gigs on Fiverr. Uh, flight instruction, build planning, and tuning. Uh, you spend a half an hour or an hour on a Skype call with me, and we just go through all the stuff. So it's your way of getting access to somebody that's been in this hobby for almost eight years. Uh, I've been doing it professionally for the last, like, three or so. Um, I've done tons of cinematic work in downtown Atlanta uh, with a whole bunch of people that are far too famous for me to have met. Um, but yeah, if you want that, if you're looking, you know, if, if you've been in the hobby for six months and you want to like all of a sudden one day to the next have the amount of knowledge of somebody that's been into the hobby for a year and six months, this is a way to do it. Uh, so yeah, head on over to CIDFPV.com for access to that Fiverr or just message me and, and we'll go through it. Um, 
yeah, I can help you fly better, build better, tune better. The the build planning service is awesome because I have like 20 some questions that I ask you to figure out what the exact right motor, propeller, battery, frame, uh, video system uh, is going to be for you so that you do a build that's very specific for what is going to work best in your specific scenario, where you fly, how you fly, what are you doing with the footage, all that good stuff. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff over on the website. Uh, there's a link to my Patreon, which is the best way that you can possibly support me. And you can hop on there for as little as like 10 cents a day, basically. It's three bucks a month. Um, there is a uh, website with a bunch of shirts called Teespring. There is an Etsy store. And then there's a ton of affiliate links. Uh, so, yeah, a bunch of different ways you can support me. Some of them are free. Some of them require you to spend a couple of bucks. Whatever works for you. Uh, Mr. Blue Sky says, just soldered a BT 2.0 pigtail on one of my, on one of the Mobula 6 fleet. Works fine. Three more to go plus a Mobula 7. Nice. Uh, BT 2.0 is magic. If you're still running PH 2.0, stop it. Uh, there is such a performance increase in going to BT 2.0, especially if you're doing the high KV motor thing. Um, anything above... I would say like anything above 28,000 KV and, and BT 2.0 is a miracle. It's, it, it's really incredible. Uh, Gage Stays Fly says, good to see you, sir. Hope you're good. I am indeed. Hope you are as well. Ethan W says, I went to the auto show here in Toronto today. Holy, there were some insanely nice cars. Very cool. Uh, Hockey Round says, sooner please. Uh, I guess in reference to opening this and messing around with it. Damon says, uh, didn't get to catch your stream about the 33,000 KV motors on the 75 millimeter. Could you give us a too long didn't read on whether or not you found it good? Uh, they're great. They're my favorite motors that I've run on any of these 75 millimeter rigs. Uh, so yeah, I would actually love to figure out a way to even more get even more KV out of them. Uh, but at the moment, 33,000 is the highest KV on 802s. Uh, so we'll have to wait for uh, a, an even higher KV motor potentially in the future. Denzel the Turbo says, hey, oh, kids, how's everyone doing? Good to see you, CIFV. You put the hump in hump day. <laughs> Free loads you dropping the fiber link. Thank you, dude. Johnny then says, for a newbie, what should we watch out for to notice a motor needs replacing? Great question, Johnny then. Um, so it's pretty... It, the, the main thing, so here's the easiest easiest way to kind of do it. Um, you're going to fly a rig a bunch. At some point, it's going to start acting different or weird. Um, the absolute easiest thing to do is to flip it into turtle mode and then very gently uh, just go into the diagonals. Going into the diagonals on your right thumbstick is going to only fire up one motor. And the reason you want to do it really gently is that you can really feel the vibrations at lower RPMs. Um, so hold the rig in your hand and just go very gently into the diagonals. You'll very you, you'll you'll quickly realize like that a little a little bit of a push gets it to the point where it vibrates the most. And what you're doing is you're going to test each motor individually while you're holding it, and you're just going to feel four vibrations. You can leave the propellers on, and then if there's one of them that's vibrating harder than the others, first things first, change the propeller out, because that's probably where the problem is. If that doesn't fix it, or if you want to just check the motors, take the propellers off and do that same deal. And with the propellers off, obviously, you're only testing the motor um, with its vibration. What basically happens is you've got like the can of the motor and then you've got the motor shaft sticking up and then you got your propeller on there. And when you crash, the ducts deflect and they push into that propeller. And so you've got the motor, you've got the shaft, you've got the propeller. It's going to, in crashes, it's going to push on the propeller. And to some extent, it's going to bend. And, and one of the reasons that the plastic frames are so much more durable in terms of motors is that the whole thing is going to bend. Like, you, you see how the mo the bottom of the motor moves there, too? That really helps because the, the entire frame and, and the, whole, the, the whole corner of the rig, actually, uh, is going to take that energy and more slowly dissipate it. Um Newbie Drone has a carbon fiber brace for this frame that I really don't recommend. This is the Cockroach 65 V3. If you put the carbon fiber brace on here, or if you run any of the carbon fiber frames that are out there, 
what happens is you've now solidly mounted that motor. So every single time you crash, that energy gets pushed into the propeller and then it just dumps all that energy into the motor, into the can of the motor and the bell and the motor shaft. And what happens pretty quickly with, with a rigidly mounted motor is this tiny little one millimeter motor shaft will just bend up above the bell and it bends over and then the whole propeller starts wobbling and that creates a whole bunch of vibrations that then get into the gyro, pid loop gets angry, quad flies worse, motors get hotter, yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, that's how you check for that. Um, if you're not running a carbon fiber setup, if you're running a full plastic frame, that's gonna take a while. You're, you're looking at at least usually 50, 100 crashes before you start to have that happen. So it's not something that you have to look out for in the first week, uh, but after a couple of months, you might notice your motors running a little bit worse, a little bit more noisy, um, and then you might notice that the, the when, when you plug an absolutely freshly charged new battery in, um, it might try to like fly away a little bit on you, or like when you chop the throttle, there might be a little bit of a weird delay or a weird sound. Um, and that's potentially what's going on. There's just more vibrations getting into the gyro, into the pid loop. Um, and the, the, one of the pid loops jobs, I mean, technically it's the filtering's job, but, um, when there are too many vibrations getting in, what the pid loop, the pid loop doesn't necessarily understand what those vibrations are. So it's going to try to, uh, fight against each one of those vibrations. So the vibration is going to do this and the pid loop is running at either four or 8,000 cycles per second. So it's going to try to like speed the one when it gets each one of these vibrations, it's going to speed the motors up on one side, break the motors down on the other side. And then when it vibrates the other way, it's going to do the opposite. So it's going to constantly be spinning these motors up and down and up and down and up and down to try to fight this constant vibration just because your, pro your prop or your motor are bent. Um, and that can lead to hot motors, right? It's going to use battery energy in order to do that. So you're going to get less runtime, less power. Everything is bad in that scenario. So um, healthy motors, healthy props are, are really important. Uh, but on a fully plastic frame, uh, they're incredibly uh, resistant to that behavior. Again, just because the whole side of the frame is going to absorb the energy that you put in with every single crash. Everybody crashes different. If you're crashing into like hardwood floors, full throttle, it's obviously going to happen a lot sooner. Um, if you're crashing from like low altitudes into carpet, it's kind of never going to happen. But you're not only going to crash into carpet. You've got, you know, walls, you've got shelves. Those are all hard materials, and, and that's what's going to start to bend the props in the motor shaft. So, uh, where are we at here? Free Lojo, thank you for putting that Patreon link down there as well. You Jalen says, I want to build a 75 millimeter 1S HD zero rig. Would you recommend high KV 802 or 1002 motors for freestyle? Um, I prefer the high KV 802s. Um, the 75, although it, it really does depend on what you're going to do with it. If it's going to be a rig that you fly outside in like wide open spaces, the 1002s are probably a better bet. The highest KV 1002s are the Flywoo. Uh, 23,500 KVs, and those are absolutely the only ones that I would put on there. Um, I really wish that somebody would make 1002s at a higher KV, 25,027, screw it, 30,000 KV. You can always motor limit them down in the PIDs tab. So um, if you're going to be flying it in smaller spaces or if you want to try to fly it both indoor and outdoor, hands down the 802s, they're going to make it so much lighter. Um, and they the, the the 802s will actually give you a slightly crisper throttle response because you can get them in higher kvs and they are lighter the bell is lighter um with 1002s you also have the option of running tri blades if you're going to run especially high kv 802s on a 75 mil rig um you're really going to be on the gem fan by blades the 1610 by blades which is fine they are a brilliant propeller they're they're my favorite for sure um, but the 1002s at 23,500 KV, you can still run them on that prop, but they, since there's so much of a lower KV, it's, it's nice to go up to a tri-bladed propeller to make that, make up that difference. Um, at that point, to be honest, also you can think about the Meteor 75 Pro frame. 
uh, and then you run the 45 millimeter props. Uh, these 45 millimeter props really woke up these 1002s for me. Um, even though this frame is a lot heavier um, and these propellers are a little bit heavier than the regular 1.6 inches, um, yeah, th if, if I was going to run 1002s on a 75 millimeter rig, it would be here. It would be this setup. Don't mind the mismatched props. That's just me playing around. Getting ready to click clickbait y'all with a with a funny thumbnail when we do um, put this. Uh, I've I've run this frame and these motors on my walk snail 75 millimeter rig, um, but only in the basement here, which is awful small for that heavy of a rig. Um, I am gonna get that outside and rail it around and, and see how it is. That's coming soon. So that's what I'd recommend, brother. It's all about. I mean, to be honest, a lot of the decisions that you're gonna make in terms of your build should surround sh should be made with like the top priority being where am i going to fly this um the location that you're going to fly a rig at has like everything to do with how much power you need to make um how much uh all up weight you can carry really those are the two biggest things um and it really you know it's sort of a right tool for the right job situation so keep that in mind for sure uh, Amaril says, did I miss you trashing the Mobula 624? No, I've only been streaming for a couple of minutes. Good lord, it's been a half an hour already. Uh, Fan says, do the Gem Fan Biblades still make sense on a 65mm HD0 build with Tiny Whoop 27,000 KV 702 motors? Um, they do, but here's the thing about propellers. They're super cheap, and they make the biggest difference in flight characteristics uh, on anything. Just like tires on a car. Um, I have a, a long, long, long motorsport background before FPV, um, and as an instructor for many years, everybody would, you know, get in the car and, and talk about like, oh, I got these plans for coilovers and, and intake and exhaust and midpipe and turbo and all this nonsense, and I'm like, you should change all of those plans and put tires first because tires have the biggest impact on performance in a car. Um, same thing with these things. The propellers make the biggest difference. So, and they're super, super, super cheap. So next time you do an order, buy all of the Tiny Whoop propellers that that store has. It'll cost you like $20 to get every single different propeller that that store sells. And then A, you've got a bunch of extra props. B, you can test those propellers out and it's really good practice for you to start to try to like understand the differences in flight characteristics from heavy props, light props, high pitch, low, pre low pitch. Um, it's going to make you a better pilot going through that experience and then you're going to get to pick the prop that really suits your flight style the best, right? Every single one of us flies completely different. We fly in different spots. We have different tastes. We like different pilots. We're doing different things with our footage. So the propellers that I love might not be the propellers that you love. And so, yeah, get a bunch, try them. It's not going to cost you much money. It's a great learning experience. Um, and yeah, it's always nice to have a bunch of extra props floating around too, right? CMYK says, what's, a, what's good, gangly gang and Ciotti FPV? YouTube just did the thing. Let me scroll back up and try to find where I was. Greenhorn FPV says, do you have a dummy's guide to slider tuning? Um, I don't, but basically the top two sliders are the most important ones. Um, run your rig as it is out of the box, completely stock. If it's not good enough for you and you care about what your flight footage looks like, I say that because a stock PID tune is going to make you a better pilot. Because with a stock PID tune, there is going to be prop wash, and there are going to be weird little things that happen when you put the rig into dirty air. And if you're looking to get good as a pilot, it's really important to learn that and to not put the rig into dirty air unless you absolutely have to. So going nuts on your tune is going to cover up all of those situations and you're potentially never going to learn them. So if, if you're trying to get good, leave the stock tune. Also, the stock tune is going to let you beat the hell out of the rig and keep flying and flying and flying and flying and flying. The more aggressive you are with your tune, the more picky the rig is going to be and the more time you're going to have to spend changing props and motors. And if you're trying to get good, that doesn't really help you. So... If you're, you know, if, if you've got a YouTube channel and you want your flight footage to look really good on that channel so you seem like you're professional, I get it. Crank that tune up, baby. Um, if you just want to look like a better pilot than you are in front of your friends, cool. Crank the tune up. 
those are kind of the two biggest... I mean, I guess you could make an argument for, like, racing. It might make you a little bit faster to have a, a cranked-up tune. Um, but, yeah, in a lot of cases, a lot of people should not necessarily be jacking the tune up um, because there are some negatives to it, for sure. But if you decide that you want to crank the tune up, run it stock, fly it, see how it is, it might be totally fine. If it's not, take the first slider, move it from 1.0 to 1.2, fly it, see how it is. If it's still cool and it's not acting weird... Take the top slider, move it from 1.2 to 1.4, and now take the second slider, move that from 1.0 to 1.2. Fly it, see if it's okay. Still okay? Keep doing that. 0.2 at a time. Keep pushing them up, pushing them up, pushing them up, pushing them up. Eventually, the quad is going to tell you that it's unhappy. It's going to start acting funny. It's going to fly away when you arm it. There's going to be a different sound to it. At that point, you've gone too far. Back it off. That's it. That tune right there is about 95% perfect. As your motors and props get beat up more and more and more and more and more, you're going to have to bring those sliders down. This is why I don't give people my tune, because I don't have a tune. Every single individual rig that I've got has a completely different tune on it, because they have a different amount of abuse in the motors, in the propellers, and I'm using them for different things. Some of them I want to be infinitely durable. Some of them I just want the footage to look absolutely as good as possible. So... There is no one-size-fits-all tune. This is why the presets I really don't agree with. That preset is for that specific pilot in his specific build. You're a different pilot. You've got a different build. You've been beating it more or less than that person. So, yeah, um, custom tuning is definitely the way to go. Betaflight has made it stupidly simple with the sliders. If two sliders is too confusing for you, go all the way to the bottom to the master slider and just move that one up and down. And you're not gonna really move it down, you're gonna just move it up. And you just move it up until the rig tells you that it's unhappy, and then you move it down a little bit. That's tuning. Betaflight has made it incredibly simple. Um, don't be afraid of it. God forbid, worst case scenario, the rig starts to fly away, you disarm it, and you bring it back to 1.0 and say, nope, I'm just gonna fly it on stock, and it's gonna be totally fine. Uh, Ant says, what's your opinion on the 802 EX 33,000 hex edition motors on the Tiny Whoop website? I love them. I've flown them a ton on this channel in past live streams. They are brilliant. Um, they are my motor of choice at the moment for uh, my jungle gym. Basically, any 75 millimeter heavier rig. I've got a Walksnail 75 millimeter rig. I've been flying a lot and trying to refine lately, um, and they are just brilliant on there. Uh, the only problem with them is they only have that one millimeter motor shaft, uh, but I'm going to be changing the bells on them to uh, the Tiny Whoop bells that are a one and a half millimeter, excuse me, motor shaft um, in the next like week or so. So subscribe, do all the things, and come back and see me for that. Uh, but the past like two or three or four live streams have been had loads of content uh with those motors uh and then the past couple of weeks too i had those motors on the 65 millimeter rig um so just go to my channel there's a little um there's a little magnifying glass click that magnifying glass and type 33,000 kv and and it'll find a whole bunch of live streams with me flying those motors and talking about them uh howard uh howard b i'm not gonna wreck your last name uh says so what i'm hearing is to is use snow blowers eye gals or uh the uwl motors from tiny whoop if you want to use the carbon frame. Um, yeah, I guess. I, I, I've never really thought about that. Um, I, I, the, the, the carbon fiber frames, to me, the, the only real benefit is that they push the camera forward to get the ducts out of view. Um, so I use those frames for the, the drift car chasing rigs, like what you were seeing in the intro uh, to the stream. Uh, but other than that, you know, the carbon fiber frames have more obstructions down below the propeller, so you get less power, less runtime. Um, so, yeah, if if getting the ducts out of view is really important to you, by all means, I do um, use those frames. Otherwise, the, the plastic frames, in my experience, kind of do most everything else better. Um, but if you're going to use those frames, yeah, and, and you want durability, if, if that's important to you, uh, the one and a half mil motor shaft motors are going to help a lot. Uh, Zach says, got a Mobula 6 with 19,000 kV motors. Uh, flight controller would reset mid-flight. After a while, the drone lost all of its beta flight settings. Uh, after reinstalling the dump, the drone will arm. I have a feeling that you meant to say won't arm, but... That's way different on the keyboard, so I'm going to stick with will arm. Uh, as I throttle up, the, dr the drone shits off. 
Is my flight controller ruined? What should I replace with since F4 Happy Models are still out of stock? Um, that is... Everybody wants to see me open and fly this, so I'm not... That's like a 10, 15-minute troubleshoot, Zach. Uh, message me over on Discord or just post this on the Discord general channel. Link to my Discord over on CIDFPV.com. Um, if you want an immediate answer, post it in general, and a whole bunch of the brilliant people that hang out in this chat all the time are going to help you out. Um, if you message me, it'll usually take me a couple of days to get back to you just because I get blasted with messages every time I live stream. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, brother. I, it's just too long of a troubleshoot, and everybody will kill me for not opening this <laughs> if I dive into that because it could be any... There's just a lot of things that it could be. Uh, MoFPV says, excited to see your reaction on the stock tune in the six. Uh, Ugelen says, awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it always, brother. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, my friend Kevin Sumner says, did you and Quad66 figure out the no duct in view camera mount? Uh, we have not. Uh, yeah, still trying to figure that out. Fan uh, with a 499 super chat. Thank you so much, man. He says, you rock. Thanks for the advice. Huge motorsport fan too. Became a huge fan of Jesse over at Tiny Whoop. Thanks to your stream. Uh, if I do nothing else, helping any of you become a, a, a huge fan of Jesse uh, is awesome. Uh, Jesse is just the greatest guy ever. Um, yeah, if, if you get a chance to meet Jesse in person ever, do whatever it takes. That guy is like, yeah, he is legendary in the world of FPV. But like to me, he's just legendary as a human being. He, he's just such a great person. Uh, 661 FPV is in the house. What's up, homie? Uh, he says, also, uh, read the info on beta flight when you hold your mouse over the question marks. Great, great, great call. Uh, they will describe what everything does in beta flight. Uh, he's talking to Greenhorn FPV. Yeah, if you didn't know, in beta flight, there are tool tips off on the left of most things. Those tool tips are gold. Every time you're in beta flight, roll your cursor over the question marks and read a couple of things. If you don't understand it on that day, the next time you read it, you'll understand it a little bit more. Uh, there, there is gold in them there, tool tips, my friends. Uh, 661 says, and I, uh, and I do realize you like the really low cam mounts for chasing. Yeah, for sure. Gray Hat says, what's up? And I'm caught up on chat just like that. Hey, here's something I've been working on that you might dig. You might not. If you don't, screw you. <laughs> Let's see if it'll run. Uh, really, really quick. This will be on Instagram sooner than later. I don't know why that just shit the bed, but there you go. There's a little preview of what's coming to uh, Instagram soon. I just spent like two hours working on that, so <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all proud of it. I'm, I'm pretty happy how it came out. It, it was supposed to be, um, I don't know what scale they are, Gray Hat. They're, they're whatever like the normal scale is. They're, they're like If you just look up like RC Drift Car on Google, um, it's whatever the normal scale is. They're like this big. So whatever scale that is, uh, but yeah, that's coming to Instagram soon. I guess I'll throw a version of that up on up on here. Uh, might as well, right? No reason not to. So hey, uh, no, hold on. We have to do this real quick.
I stole that from Mighty Car Mods. Uh, all facts, it says they're 124th scale. Uh, I stole that from Mighty Car Mods. Go subscribe to their channel. I emailed them and asked for permission to use it, and they didn't get back to me because I'm nobody in their massive channel. Uh, but hook them up. Go subscribe to them. If you're at all into cars, you need to subscribe to Mighty Car Mods. They're the best car channel on YouTube, hands down. Super cool guys. Um, they're, they're also like cool human beings. Like they're adv they're big time advocates for mental health, which you all know that is a big deal with me. Um, so yeah, hook them up. Uh, happy model sent me this and it arrived today. Thank you. Happy model. Very, very cool. Very, very, very cool for you to send this over. I, I almost never get like new stuff. Um, like, like release date stuff. Right. So yeah, very, very cool of them. Uh, Big old box from We Bleed FPV, which is just amazing. Um, I, I did not expect this many crown frames. <laughs> so th there are going to be there are going to be crown frames on. Well, let's look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So for the next eleven months, the the first Monday live stream of every single month. Um, I do uh, four giveaways. One of those giveaways is for the $5 a month patrons. It is the Tiny Whoop and Toothpick giveaway. For the next 11 months, there will be crown frames on those giveaways, thanks to Weebleed FPV. Um, so massive shout out. I'm also to, to them for the support. Uh, I'm also gonna like open these up and, and just keep a stack of, this is all of the colors. So I'm just gonna keep a stack of uh, all of the colors and to, to just show off because it's just super cool uh, to see all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 colors all stacked up. So, yeah, thank you so much, Zotac. Really, really cool. 6, 6, one says, can he bind it? We're going to see, man. We're going to see. Um, also, uh, Zotac threw in some uh, uh, LEDs because he's seen me kind of screwing around with the, the studio back here with some LEDs. Much appreciated. Uh, a prototype set of motors that I don't know if he wants me really talking about, but you probably already know about these if you've been paying attention in Tiny Whoop World over the last couple of months. So uh, this will be very fun. Uh, and then two sets of the new red Gem Fan Ultra Lightweight uh, 1219s. So we are going to run these on this Mobula 6 2024, uh, which is why I wanted to do this. I had to do this mailbag real quick. So uh, let's put this stuff ah, away here and we're going to dive in to the mob six 2024 all right there it is nope put this over here okay cool so i have opened this and i and i just kind of took a quick look at it but i haven't really done anything with it so this is Pretty, uh, pretty close to a uh, proper like first look unboxing if you care about that kind of thing. Uh, let me get the Logitech software fired up real quick so that the focus locks in. There we go. All right, cool. Thank you, Logitech. Uh, this camera might blink a little bit. I apologize for that. Uh, so we've of course got stickers bunch of this stuff, extra props, screwdriver, some extra screws, some extra, uh, it's a, a terrible little prop remover that really doesn't work. Um, and then we've got the Mobula 6 2024. The, the, the biggest like initial impression that I got that kind of shocked me is how stiff this like G string style camera mount is. I did not expect that. I don't run this style of camera mount because I, I just don't, I mean, the main reason is that the, the old school Mobula 6 canopy is like really light and incredibly strong. Um, and these G-string-ish mounts, I don't know, they just really don't seem like they would be anywhere near as strong. Um, I've run TPU ones and they haven't been as strong. I've had issues with the camera slamming into the AIO and killing the AIO. Um, this uh, this mount here though is mold is, is is like a molded plastic mount, and good God is it strong! It I almost feel like it might be a little bit too strong. I won't know until I smash this thing into the wall seven thousand times. So you know, come back for for, for feedback on that. But 
Uh, I'm really impressed by how strong it is, so that's great. Uh, ELRS antenna kind of sticking out the top here right next to the uh, VTX antenna, no sweat there. Bunch of different screw holes in the back here for different amounts of up tilt, which is pretty cool. We're gonna leave it on the farthest rearward mount, which is gonna give us the least amount of up tilt. That's really kind of what you want for freestyle. Uh, one thing I definitely noticed here, let me give it to you on the close-up camera, is that they have not pushed the propellers all the way down on the motor shafts. This is a great way to bend your motor shafts right here. Having the propeller up real high on the, I mean, it's not up real high, like they've pushed the, the propellers down most of the way uh, to the point where the shaft is almost poking through the top but you wanna push these down all the way. You want these props absolutely buried on these motor shafts so that the motor shaft is actually sticking out the top of the propeller. And I'm having a hard time. Usually these gem fan, oh God, uh, 12 weight propellers allow you to do that, but I'm actually having a hard time with that. So, uh, although, these are not my favorite props, so we're just going to fly one battery with these propellers and then we're going to change it out to a couple of different propellers um, and see how it is. Uh, Sixus one says, Nick Burns broke the part where the camera mounts to the camera mount. Uh, uh, he didn't break it on this analog one, he broke it on the uh, HD01. So apparently this analog one, and it's right here where my index finger is that he broke, um, only on the, the thinner uh, uh, HD zero one. So on this analog one, apparently this is strong enough for him, uh, which hopefully means that it's also strong enough for me. One of my worries that I'm seeing right here, look at the angle of this rear screw. See how that rear screw is angled quite a bit. That's, that might be putting an, uh, that to me is going to be putting an awful lot of stress on the mounting post on the frame below that. So that's a little bit scary. Um, if that ends up being a weak point, what you can do is run a longer screw there. Uh, Happy Model has these Mobula 7 screws that are significantly longer. And so if you ever have an issue on a tiny whoop breaking those posts off of the frame, all you got to do is get yourself a set of these longer screws um, and put those into that rear mounting point and it makes a massive difference. I've had to do that a couple of times, and once I've run these longer screws, I've never had that issue again. So just a little bit of food for thought. I'm gonna try to screw that down a little bit more. That's, man, that's that's moving around an awful lot. That's a little scary. Um, maybe it's fine though. It's, it's not something that I've heard anybody complain about yet. Uh, so hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, Nick pointed this out. They, they put a little lip on the top of the camera mount, which is awesome. This is this this just tiny little extra bit of plastic here is amazing. That is, I'm, I'm loving that. Uh, what else? Direct soldered motors. I don't like that, but the racers will love that. Uh, the, the AIO is undersized a little bit. And in theory, that would mean that you can pr potentially run this AIO on the Meteor 65 Pro frame. I cannot figure out anything that that Meteor 65 Pro frame does better than uh, the, the regular old frames with, especially with bi-blades. You don't have much of a prop selection on that frame. It's it's significantly heavier when you factor in the bigger propellers. And it's, yeah, I mean, look, regular 65 and 75 are the most popular for a reason. Um, so I really recommend that you run those. Oh God, one of my favorite things is an A30 connector so that you can run BT 2.0 batteries right out of the box. That is a really big deal. Uh, my hat is off to Happy Model for putting that A30 connector on there. Absolutely love it. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, like I said earlier, 702, 28,000 KV motors. Um, I'm very familiar with 702s in a ton of different KVs, so I kind of know what to expect. Oh, uh, this is a new frame. This is a, a brand new frame that I'm assuming is lightweight. I'm not going to tear this thing all the way down the night to, to weigh the frame. But yeah, I mean, as we get more and more components for 65 millimeter tiny whoops, we can continue to sort of refine them. Hopefully this is a good frame. I haven't heard anything bad about it yet. Uh, let's get a quick weight. And then we'll plug it into Betaflight and take a look at it in there because I can't really think of what else this, 
Wow, that's really lightweight. 17.71 grams. Good God. This is the lightest weight Tiny Whoop that I will ever have flown, come to think of it. Uh, most of my rigs are 18 point something grams. So, damn, that's really, really, really light. That's impressive. Uh, the, the cap, excuse me, the camera is also direct soldered, which, uh, you know, what I do, I do camera testing every once in a while. So that would drive me mad when I was doing camera testing, but like you don't typically break cameras all that often. So I'm, I'm not as annoyed by direct soldering a camera as I am about direct soldering motors. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of is what it is. I mean, Hey, look, it, that's how you get this thing to be as light as it is, right? You remove connectors, you remove stuff, uh, you remove weight anywhere you possibly can. Uh, Mazda has something called the Graham theory. Um, and it's like, they, they try to save, you know, in, in cars, it's, you want to save pounds and you want to save like, tens of pounds or hundreds of pounds um but in but grams make ounces and ounces make pounds is is one of the sayings in in the motorsport world um and yeah mazda understands that and they have some of the lightest weight cars that you can buy because they you know all through their company they have this gram theory where like if you can save a gram or two do it and it all ends up adding up you know, they're one of the only companies that come that's come out with a new version of a car, the fourth generation of the Miata, that is lighter than the previous generation. Like, I don't know of any car that has ever been lighter in the next generation. It's always heavier. There's always more electronics, more safety stuff, more power. Um, so, yeah. Grams make ounces, ounces make pounds. Uh, cool. Let's get this thing into beta flight and see what's up with the tune. And then we'll get it bound hopefully and put it up in the air so if you're new uh the inside joke there is that elrs is sometimes very difficult to bind um and doing a lot of testing on these live streams uh sorry grams make kilos not ounces it's fine uh yeah doing a lot of testing and building on these live streams uh, there have been quite a few live streams where ELRS has just been a complete pain in the ass and I've gone like 15, 20, 30 minutes without being able to get rigs. But I think there's even been live streams where I've just given up. Um, but hopefully this will not be one of those. <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to just plug and unplug three times. It'll go into binding mode. Um, I'm assuming that it's on ELRS 3.0. I'll throw the, the module that I've got on ELRS 3.0 into the uh, transmitter and we'll be bound, but you'll find out soon enough. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see if the accelerometer is calibrated. Not really. All right, so we're gonna do that first. That's off by quite a bit. So put it flat on the desk, calibrate the accelerometer, just a super quick little thing to do. Uh, nothing interesting, the ports tab, configuration, so the gyro uh, update frequency is 3.2 kilohertz, which means that it's a BMI 270 gyro. That's fine. Uh, change the name over to me. Uh, accelerometer is turned on. Great. Uh, D-Shot beacon configuration is turned on. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever seen. Uh, this is what controls the digital beeper, uh, which is really, really nice to, use, to have. OSD is turned on. Air mode is permanently enabled. Save and reboot to lock in the, the quad name. Uh, they did not send me the HD0 model, uh, just the analog one. Uh, power and battery. Hey, look at that. Minimum cell voltage and warning cell voltage are properly set for a tiny whoop. That's great. They even have a custom battery scale in here. That's awesome. Uh, fail safe. I'm going to move the guard time up to three seconds. That's just something I do on, on harmless rigs. Uh, in case it does go into fail safe, it'll hang on to the last command for a little bit longer. I don't recommend you do that for the record. Uh, PID tuning, let, let's come back to uh, receiver tab, crossfire. All right, so this is on AETR for whatever reason. When I was new, my transmitter was originally on TAER, so I need to change that. Stick low threshold, I'm going to just make an assumption that it's going to be fine. Move that to 1,000 and 2,000. A uh, little bit of extra dead band. 
just so that we don't have any weird jittering in the middle. And then I like a little bit of RC, a little bit more RC smoothing. Uh, so I'm gonna bump this from 30 up to 100. These are just personal settings. Uh, you do not need to change any of this stuff. This is just gonna make it a little bit more normal for me to kind of fly. Uh, in the modes tab here, we've got, wow, turtle mode is on aux eight. That's a little weird. We're going to move it to aux three where it is on my transmitter. Uh, and then we're going to turn on the beeper. Where's the beeper at? Where is it? There it is. So we're going to add range. We're going to put it on the aux three and I'm going to put the beeper in the downward switch position. And then I'm going to put turtle mode in the middle switch position. You used to have to do that, but you really don't need to do that. Uh, save it. Uh, adjustments we don't necessarily need, but I do have this really cool little setup here with OSD that allows me to turn the OSD off. Uh, search my channel for that. I've gone over it a whole bunch of times if you're interested. Uh, basically, it, allow it allows me to turn off the OSD uh, so that the if I'm recording DVR, there's no ugly OSD elements all over it. Uh, 12 motor poles, good. Bidirectional D shot is turned on, fantastic. Uh, it's set up for props out. I like that. Uh, and now my OSD, I'm actually going to grab a diff off of one of my other tiny whoops. To wow, they've got a lot of OSD elements on here. <laughs> Holy cow. I'd rather have too many than too few though, so I'm, I'm, I don't hate that. Uh, VTX settings, just a couple of quick, th wow, they have it set to go up to YOLO 400 milliwatts out of the box. I'm gonna turn that down to 25 because we're just flying inside the house. Uh, and then low power disarm, I don't like when it's set to on, I like when it's set to on until first arm. So I'm gonna make that change as well. And then I'm gonna save here. If you want to hear me drone on and on and on and on about all these settings, watch any of my other live streams. I'm just blasting through this stuff tonight to try to get it done. Uh, let's come into the CLI and we're going to type status. And this is going to confirm which gyro it has. And there it is, BMI 270. Mentioned that earlier. You can tell by the the uh, refresh rate. And then I'm going to turn. I'm going to do a couple of quick things here. I'm going to type get PID sum. And now that's going to open up, that's going to show me that the PID sum is at uh, the normal settings, which are 50% uh, and 40%. So I'm going to highlight this right here and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to type set. Uh, make sure you guys can see it. I'm going to type set space. I'm going to paste that. I'm going to change 500 to 1000. That is going to give the PID loop access to 100% of the motor's power on this first one controls pitch and roll, this second one controls yaw. Set, space, paste it, instead of 400, 1000, and now yaw is gonna have access to full power. I'm now gonna type get crash, and that's gonna show me all of the different crash items in here, and I'm gonna turn on crash recovery. You don't have to do any of this stuff, my friends, but I want this thing to be as similar to all of my other rigs as possible. I'm actually gonna grab my crash recovery stuff from uh, another rig. Let me do that real quick, because I also need to grab the uh, OSD settings. So let me just knock that out super fast here. Um, again, this is me getting this thing as close to what is normal as possible for me. Um, you don't need to do any of this stuff, but this stuff does help. Um, if you hang around, if you hang around a little bit on these live streams, you'll learn what all this stuff is. Come back to any other stream and hammer me in the chat about this stuff. And I will spend the full two hours talking about it to kind of dive in. Or if you want the quick and quick and dirty, just follow everything I'm doing here. It's all going to help you out quite a bit. Um, so this is like a, a, a rig that I fly a lot. So I'm going to type diff. If you type diff into the CLI, D-I-F-F, -F, it's going to show you everything that you've changed from stock. And so now what I can do is scroll up a little bit. And there's going to be a whole bunch of items here that say set 
OSD. This is my custom OSD. So I can go in here and just copy all of this into the clipboard. And on the other rig, I can just paste this. And that'll bring over my entire OSD. So I'm gonna unplug one of my normal rigs. I'm gonna plug the Mobula 6 2024 back in. I'm gonna connect, go into the CLI and paste all of those OSD settings. And whenever you do this, you gotta look for this red text. The red text means that you have pasted some stuff in where basically the names have changed. In between versions of Betaflight, they'll change names of certain stuff in the CLI. And so th this quad must be on 4.3 and they've now changed a bunch of the names. Uh, let me really quickly just skim it. Max speed off and battery off on. We should be okay. Minimum link quality on. We should be fine. Now I'm gonna type save. I'm going to reconnect and I'm going to go into the OSD and see what it looks like. All right, so now we're into the OSD. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff that's on that I don't necessarily want to be on. So let me turn some of this stuff off. Disarmed, I'm going to turn off. Core temperature, I'm going to turn off. ESC RPM, I'm going to turn off. Ugh, I hate when it does this. I don't know why it does that. It's some weird bug in, in Betaflight. Every once in a while, the OSD just blanks out like that. Disconnect and reconnect. Uh and it'll come on back. And then there's a couple more things. Fly mode, I don't need that. Uh, RSSI DBM value, I don't want that. Timer two, I don't want that. And there we go. This, what is this? This is some kind of, oh, oh, VTX channel. I don't want that either. There we go. All right, so this is my OSD that I'm used to. And everything is looking good. Cool. So now I just want to grab my crash recovery settings off this other rig as well. So I'm plugging one of my normals in here. Crash recovery, basically, when the gyro detects like a big spike uh, of G-force that the, the quad can't generate from the, uh, from the rates that are dialed in, crash recovery will like instantly turn the accelerometer on and it'll bring the, the quad back up to level. So when you smack into something, all of a sudden it'll whoop and it'll and, and the rig will be level. You know, you've crashed, it's it's potentially gonna then ping pong around the room, but it'll instantly go to level and it just makes catching crashes much simpler. So I'm gonna come in here and look for my crash recovery settings. Uh, where is it at? It's gonna say set. Crash, where the hell is it? Come on. Where are you at, crash recovery? Uh, let me do this. I'm going to type get crash in here. And then, okay, so 100% zero. Crash filled expo 35. You know what? I can just, oh no, I have to do it in the diff. Because diff has all the the diff has the word set in front, so it'll change the stuff for you. Hold on, I'll find it. Set ah, here it is, here it is, here it is, right here, right here. It's under the profile. So set. I mean, you guys won't have this on your other rigs, but this is a really cool way of of getting uh, different quads matched up. So these are the these are my crash uh, uh, crash recovery settings, which actually might help you guys out quite a bit. It took me a while to dial this, to dial crash recovery in. This won't work for everyone. This is dependent upon your rates uh, and how hard you crash. But the, if you run rates that are near mine, this will work really well. Crash D threshold 80, crash G threshold 800, uh, crash set point threshold 500, and then the crash uh, recovery rate of 200. They're also, I also just need to turn crash recovery on but i can just do that with with the one line in the in the cli so we're almost good to go here we go and all right there are plenty so that has now dumped those settings in i'm now going to click uh type get crash because crash recovery is currently turned off right this is the <laughs> This is a problem here, so we need to turn this on. So easiest way to do that is to highlight that, copy it, type set, 
crash recovery equals off, and we're gonna change it to on. And now crash recovery is set to on, type save, and away we go. Again, you guys don't need to do any of this stuff. If you wanna do this stuff, I've spent tons and tons of time um, figuring all this out, and some of it might help you, some of it might not. Um, some of it is specific to me and the way that I fly and the way that I crash and the rates that I run, some of it isn't. Like I said, come back to another stream and we'll dive into it, talk about it, and you'll understand what's going on. Uh, there are plenty of other uh, folks that have reviewed this rig that have flown it as it is out of the box. Uh, Nick Burns is my absolute favorite. Definitely check out his review if you want to see what it's like stock. I haven't made any massive, massive, massive changes yet. Um, so this is going to fly very similar to as it is out of the box. These are like quality of life things. And they're also things that just I'm used to. I want to evaluate this in a, in, in a way that like, I want to fly it in a way that makes me comfortable so I can actually try to notice the subtleties. And so that's why I'm doing some of this stuff. Cool. Just for the sake of argument, let's take a look in the PIDs tab. I'm not going to change any of this stuff because this is, these are the things that will drastically change the way this flies. Pretty, uh, pretty tame PID tune. I actually really like this. Happy Model has shipped, um, so like the previous Mobula 6 came with really aggressive uh, PIDs because it had really low KV motors on it. And it would cause problems for new folks that were just like changing to really high KV motors. Uh, this I really like. I really, really, really like where this PID tune is at. Um, it's just much more sort of down the middle with, with these sliders. So th this is a this gives a thumbs up for me. Um, I'm gonna go to rate profile one, and I'm gonna put my rates in here. Center sensitivity is 40. I don't recommend you run anybody else's rates. Rates are incredibly personal to everyone. You can try somebody else's rates, but then change them because you are different than everyone else. Uh, but those are my rates, 4,770 on the actual rates, 40 center sensitivities, 700 max rate, expo of 0.7. You will probably hate expo of 0.7, uh, but I love it. <laughs> so, uh, filter settings. Interesting, interesting gyro settings here uh, for the gyro low pass filters. Pretty aggressive, actually. Pretty aggressive gyro low pass filtering. That's interesting. Uh, RPM filter is turned on. Dynamic notch is. Um, I'm going to recommend that everyone do this to the dynamic notch. This is a, a pretty standard dynamic notch setup. Standard beta flight is basically geared towards 5 inch rigs. This max frequency of 600 could potentially be too low for the KV of these motors. So I'm going to recommend you move this up to at least 800 right out of the box. I think everybody should do that. The, it's not going to add any significant amount of delay. Um, the, you're, you're opening it up for more high frequency filtering on the dynamic notch. And the higher you filter, the higher the frequencies you filter, the less delay that they add. So going from two, 600 to 800, that probably added like 0.1 of a millisecond of additional delay. That's not, that's not enough. It's well worth it to have, to give that filter a little bit of extra range so that it can hit full throttle where you're the RPMs that you're potentially turning at full throttle. If you upgrade these motors to like 30,000, 32,000, 36,000, absolutely do that. That's going to be really important. Uh, for the motors that it comes with, you probably don't need to, but we're not adding a significant amount of latency. So to hell with it. I'd rather have a little bit of extra safety. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave this thing. Let's see if we can get it bound. So I'm going to assume, like I said earlier, that it's on ELRS 3.0. So I'm going to take the module that I've got with 2.5 out and put the 3.0 module in. Fire the transmitter up. And all right. So we're going to run a, I'm going to run a little bit of an older battery here initially. And so we're going to plug it in three times once, twice, three times. That should put it in, that should put ELRS into binding mode. Come over here to the transmitter. 
go to bind and it is sending the bind request now and in theory it is now bound let's see that's what i wanted to hear we are bound and just think, ELRS is going to soon get even easier to bind than that, although that's pretty damn easy. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I do want to tighten up this rear... Uh, I do want to tighten up this rear screw. And... I'm hoping that that'll... Yeah, okay. So this rear screw was a little bit loose. I just felt it bottom out. Um, so that should be a little bit better there. Uh, it's still bending that rear uh, frame post a little bit, which I don't love, but we'll probably be, we'll probably be okay with. Um, oh, oh, oh! Uh, Raging just said most, if not all, whoops come with Blue Jay. Um, let me check. I, I, I'm a, well, no, it definitely comes with Blue Jay because it just played the Blue Jay song. But I want to see what version of Blue Jay this is on. I also want to make sure that this isn't on 96 kilohertz because. Quite frankly, 96 kilohertz sucks. <laughs> it really hurts you in terms of uh, motor braking performance, and it makes the flight characteristics worse. It does give you more efficiency and more power, but I would rather have less efficiency and less power and better flight characteristics. So I'm over at esc-configurator.com. I have plugged a battery in. We are going to hit connect. In the bottom right corner, we're going to click read settings. And it's going to tell me that it's on Blue Jay 0.19, uh, which is great. Blue Jay, Blue Jay 0.2, uh, I do not like. It doesn't tell me what... I thought it did, but it doesn't tell me what uh, kilohertz it's on. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. I, I do like to change this beacon delay to two minutes. This way, if it's plugged in for two minutes and you haven't armed it, it'll start beeping as a nice little reminder like, hey, idiot, you plugged me in two minutes ago. And I also like to turn these beep strengths up because on Tiny Whoops, the 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 engine, the motor beeper is really quiet. So uh, again, absolutely no reason to change any of this stuff. It's just simple little quality of life things that, wow, the, the startup powers are maxed out. That's interesting. Okay, now we're good. I hope it's on 48. Uh, I don't know why it didn't tell me. I thought usually it told me. It, it told you. Uh, ah, hold on. I gotta go unplug the uh, unplug and replug the VRX. Give me one second to get the uh, the feed into the into OBS for the stream. Unplugged, replugged, and now we should be good to go. Let's see. Hey. All right, so first battery I'm gonna run is a little bit of an older kind of beat up battery. Uh, and then we'll run a fresh battery and then we're gonna start changing the propellers out. Um, I might not love it on these propellers, so I'm gonna try not to bash on it too bad. Uh, first battery I'm, I'm running a, wow. Okay, so there's something. So the, the battery tray in this, all right, so let me show you something here. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you this with the uh, whoop, uh, detail camera here. All right, so most Tiny Whoop frames, when you put the battery in, the 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 frame is set up so that the battery stops when it's when it's roughly centered. Also, keep in mind that this is this part of the battery here is where the, the lithium basically is. This is just a plastic cover here with a couple little wires tucked inside of it for the connector. So this is the heavy part of the battery here. And then this is the lightweight part of the battery. Most frames set, do a good job of centering the battery here. Um, I'm not in love with this frame here because look how far forward it allows the battery to go. There's no, there's no stopper back here to keep the battery from going all the way forward. You could certainly just put your batteries in like that, but the first time that you nose this thing in, the battery is gonna shift forward. Um, so 
I, you know, uh, hopefully there's other good things about this frame, but this is a little tiny ding on the frame. I, I, I would rather there be some sort of a piece of plastic molded in back here to stop the battery and just to keep the center of gravity uh, a little bit more locked in. If you've got a battery all the way in the front like this, think about how much work the front motors are gonna have to do, right? The front motors have all this extra weight on them, so they're gonna have to do a little bit more work. What's kind of interesting about that though is when you're flying these things like this, the front motors get all of the fresh air and the rear motors get like kind of junky air that's that's jumped over the canopy and like think of the airflow, right? It's gonna get sucked into the front motors. So then the rear motors, they've gotta pull air from up here. So usually the rear motors have more work to do. So stands the kind of reason that with, with, with it being a little bit front weighted like this, that's gonna make the front motors do a little bit more work. So it, I don't know. That's, uh, I haven't like, I don't know how to test any of that stuff, but uh, yeah, not the end of, if, look, if the center of gravity is going to be wrong, it's good for it to be wrong frontwards because the front motors um, are getting cleaner air. You see what I'm saying? But all that being said, yeah, uh, this frame is, uh, hey, luckily there's a whole bunch of really, really good frames out there right now. And so, if you don't like this frame, you're spoiled for options, which is great and pretty pretty rare. It's really, really nice um, that uh, we've got some really, really, really good options. For a long time with Tiny Whoops, there would be like one frame that was so much better than the rest. One motor, one canopy. Uh, it's really nice that lately we've had some multiple options popping up. All right. Let's see how it is. So, did add a little bit of PID sum, which is gonna improve the tune a tiny little bit. Ooh, okay. This thing flies really good. This is the best flying bind and fly, hands down, already. Uh, and I've flown most of them. You can, I can definitely tell that it's light. Uh, and the, the lightness really helps with, um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, the lightness really helps with these motors being a little bit lower KV than I'm used to. I'm used to like 32,000, 36,000. Uh, these are 28,000. This flies great. Oh, look at me being a donkey. This flies really nice. Oh, oh that might be on record. Now we're good. Uh, again, this is not, uh, this is a battery that's probably been cycled at least 50 times. So this is not a brand new battery. We're going to run a brand new battery after this. This is not bad, man. I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, shout out, uh, I mentioned earlier, oh, Jesus. I mentioned earlier that, um, there is going to be a motor plug, uh, uh, a motor plug version of this AIO available in the future. Uh, shout out and thanks to Jason from Tiny Whoop for telling me that, and also telling me that once I did this review, that I I, I was okay to to tell other people this, uh, to tell other people that thing. That's the little exclusive that I put in the uh, in the title of this stream. Oh, this battery's done. Okay. So minute and 54, that is low because I had this battery plugged in when it was in um, the ESC configurator and this is just an older battery. So let's get a fresh battery on here and we can actually take a look at the runtime. Uh, let me, this is like, this battery probably only has four or five cycles on it and it's at 4.35 volts. So this is a fully charged uh, non-abused battery. Uh, if I had to guess, the battery that I just flew probably has 60 or 70 cycles on it. Um, here's a little tip. Get yourself a set of uh, um, uh, metallic Sharpies. You'll get like silver and gold and blue and red and green in a, in a package. And then whenever you buy a four pack or a six pack or an eight pack of batteries, put a different colored um, little mark on them. 
And then as you buy more and more batteries, see, so this is a blue, this is a blue marker battery. You can kind of just see it there. If you put it, if you put the markers up there, it won't rub off. Um, and so mark your batteries. And that's really helpful because this is a blue marker battery. I know that I've had this, this set of batteries for about six ish months. And I know that this is a battery that's kind of worked and it's towards the end of its life versus, I mean, it's, it's easy because this one's tattoo branded, but if you, if I have we bleed batteries with red markings, blue markings, gold markings, and I know that the red marking batteries are the absolute oldest. Those are pretty much all gone by now. The blue ones are the second oldest. The gold ones are the newest. It's super, super, super helpful. Um, and it'll also help you like evaluate which batteries you like the best. Cool. Uh, fresh battery. Let's see how it is. This thing flies great. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so I've got this combination of parts that, uh, I've figured out over the last God knows how many years, uh, of tiny whooping that I've now decided to call the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop. Um, it's basically the old school Mobula six. So it's this guy right here. Um, it is the old school Mobula 6 AIO canopy and camera with a true RC singularity antenna tucked inside the canopy. Um, my favorite motors are the Tiny Whoop 0702 32,000s. I really like the 36,000s, but good lord, they're a lot. Um, BT 2.0 and Gemfan Biblades. I'm playing around with these HQ YOLO props uh, at the moment, but. So that ultimate freestyle tiny whoop formula, um, it's magic. And like pretty much everybody that has followed my, followed that build, um, has been like, yo, this is absurdly good. Um, this out of the box feels an awful lot like what I'm used to flying, which is that ultimate freestyle setup. Um, they're sort of is no higher praise from me because I've done so much testing to figure that formula out. If anything can come anywhere near it, that is a huge accomplishment. And for a bind and fly to come close is like, that's wild. The camera also looks really nice on this. Um, I know it's a heavier camera than the uh, then <laughs> rejected. It's a heavier camera than the Runcam Nano 3, but ah, that's unrecoverable. God damn it. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, but at least the extra weight of the camera comes with a uh, really nice looking image. <laughs> so, you know, where is it? It's back here somewhere. There it is. Oh, God. All right. Ugh. Here we go. Uh, Bent FPV says, how do you like the Hummingbird V3 AIO? Um, I like it. I think it's the best AIO that Newbie Drone has ever come out with. Uh, Newbie Drone's OSD does a weird blinking thing that kind of drives me nuts. I know they're working on it, but, uh, it's still like that. Man, I cannot talk. I cannot fly when I'm... I can fly when I'm talking, uh, other than when I'm talking about... All right, so for the record, right... You just got to see crash prevention save my ass. When I smacked into that hanging gate, um, crash prevention totally saved me there. What is happening here? There we go. Uh, yeah, there's also a little bit of a worry about the durability with those Hummingbird V3AOs. Uh, mine blew up on a crash that was not all that hard, uh, which is kind of concerning. And I've heard from a couple people that uh, I do trust that they've also had theirs let go on crashes that weren't very hard. So that's a little scary. Uh, I, you know, it could just be with FPV, right? Like we demand that this stuff be infinitely inexpensive. And so durability kind of can sometimes go out the window. So it's really, really, really tough. Um, those of you that watch me fly a lot, might notice that I'm kind of bouncing around elevation wise a little bit. That's because I didn't put there's crash prevention, uh, crash recovery again. Uh, 
if if you can kind of notice that I'm bouncing around, it's because there's no throttle expo on here. Uh, I am used to having a good amount of throttle expo on Tiny Whoops. With these mega KV motors, uh, the the throttle expo really works well in kind of taming them. Ah, so close. Uh, so yeah, I'm 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 having a little bit of trouble there. Let me show you really quickly how to set the throttle expo, and I'll show you the difference that it makes. So you're going to cruise around, and you're going to look at your throttle on the right, 44, 42, 43, 42, 36, 37, and you're going to try to figure out when you're at a normal cruise, at your normal cruising speed, what your throttle is. So it's roughly like 40 or 41. Now it's 37, but we're going to go with 40. So then you're going to go into the menu, profile, come down here to rates, and then all the way down at the bottom. You can also do this in beta flight, but this is a super quick way of doing it. Throttle midpoint, that's what you were just looking for. So 40% is roughly what my cruise throttle is. And then for the throttle expo, I'm going to crank this up to, I'm going to keep it pretty low. On the really high KV motors, I do 30 or 40, but these are only 28,000 KV. So I'm just going to leave it at 20 and that'll probably be just enough. Yep. That'll be just enough to kind of chill this thing out. So now you'll notice that I'm going to kind of bounce around a little bit less <laughs> in terms of elevation, not crashing into things because of that throttle expo. These motors are not such a high KV that that's super, super, super important, but I already noticed it. Um, and I can immediately notice that it's better. You can really tell when you fly close to the ground. If you if you fly close to the ground, most of your frame, ah, most of your, ugh, most of your uh, your FPV view is taken up by the ground. So if you want to really get your throttle control, if you want to really work on your throttle control, just fly low to the ground. Uh, it's kind of magic for that. And once you start doing that, Throttle Expo is a is a thing that's going to help you out quite a bit. So, I'm not talking much about how this thing is flying because it's kind of just flying like normal for me. Jesus, look at that runtime. 3:43. Let's let the battery Oh, it's only giving me a minimum battery here. Um, so we did run the battery down pretty low, but that's that's the lowest that it was. So the, like the the last thr full throttle blip that I did, that's where it sagged down. That is really good runtime, um, especially for tri blades. All up weight is really where your runtime comes from, and this is the lightest whoop I've ever flown, and that's the longest runtime I think I've ever gotten. So that's why. And again, that was on a fresh battery. So, um, yeah, I was saying a second ago, like, I'm not talking about how it flies much because it just feels normal to me. And, like, my normal is, like I was saying earlier, this Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop that has, has like, hundreds of hours of, of me testing stuff to, to develop this. So, like, that is a huge compliment. <laughs> Like for, for a rig to be normal for me is a massive, massive, massive compliment. And, and I'm really impressed <laughs> by this thing. Like uh, the fact that this exists is awesome. Like the fact that somebody can just buy this as a bind and fly and get damn near this, that is just is so good. Like that's that's awesome. Uh, I can already tell you that, that, that this is a, a huge win as long as it's durable. Um, th and I'm not going to be able to figure that out tonight. Sorry, I'm kind of ignoring chat, guys. I just I want to get all the way through this and, and try some different propellers and, and whatnot. Um, most of pretty much all of my live streams, I will not miss a single comment of folks that have tagged me. You have to tag me. You have to type Ciati FPV in order for it to light up orange for me to read it. Um, I am going to pull these propellers off here and we're going to try some different props real quick. But 
just for the sake of argument, um, this is the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop. Let me put this up in the air really quick. You can see what the Runcam Nano 3 camera looks like, and you can just get a feeling for what I'm used to flying. Um, I'm actually not used to these propellers yet, but uh, I don't feel like changing them. So we're just gonna leave them on. I, I kinda sorta got used to them, and I was just flying tri-blades, uh, so maybe I'll be a little bit more dialed in. But just to give you a little bit of perspective, let me really quickly throw this up in the air. This AIO has had a hard life and uh, it does this strange thing. Oh shit, I gotta change the module to uh, ELRS 2.5. Hang on one second. And all right, cool. So this is not the Mobula 6 2024. This is the uh, OG Mobula 6. Fully, 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 fully upgraded. So more power, right? 32,000 KV versus 28,000 KV. Yes, you're gonna get more power. Ah! You're also gonna see me crash more. With more power comes more difficulty. But what's cool about more power, I can't believe I just crashed into that little dish. What also comes with more power is the ability to do stuff like this. Oh God, it hit the ceiling. <laughs> so yeah, I've, I kind of got used to those 28,000s. Let me try to do that again. Ready? So, yik! That, that hang time and that throw is what I really love about the, the Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop setup. But, we're not gonna get the same run time. Uh, so if that matters to you, the lower KV motors and the lighter weight rig, there's crash prevention helping me out. Or crash recovery, rather. Ah, oh, I tried to... Keep my line and oh, we gotta go upstairs. We gotta go upstairs. All right, hold on. Oh boy, am I stuck? Uh, don't be stuck. Don't be stuck. All right, so here's the here's my build up with mega ceilings. Uh, this is this is gonna be an unfair comparison because this thing is absolutely cranked. But oh god, <laughs> man, I was skimming it on that one. No, 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 relax, relax. Um, yeah, we're going to take the, uh, the Mobula upstairs. What was that? This thing has a lot of power. I'm not used to this on these tri-blades either. The tri-blades are extra powerful. I'm used to this on the gem fan buys, which are a little bit more in control on these mega KV motors. So, all right. That also helps me to take some of the juice out of this battery. I don't want to spend much time flying this. Actually, I'm just gonna put like 10 more seconds in and then, and then we're gonna swap. But this is what I'm used to flying. And it's not, ah, it's not that far off. Ah. <laughs> and as you can see, I crash this thing a lot. It just has so much power, but um, there's crash prevention right there, crash recovery rather. Um, I'm willing to take that hit because more power, baby, you know? Oh! <laughs> oh, get out of there. All right, so we're gonna stop flying this, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of perspective as to what is my normal, cool? All right. And let's get this thing out of here and we're gonna go back to the, um, so I don't know what the runtime was, but uh, if you wanna rewind or if you noticed it, this battery is at 3.7 volts. Uh, the battery that I ran on the Mobula 6 2024 has now bounced back to 3.7 volts. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the lower KV, the lighter weight is is really just, crazy run i i am i guess i'm not shocked by the runtime it makes sense it makes sense um i'm i'm actually going to really quickly check the motors to see if i've bent any of these motor shafts yet uh because these props are sitting up a little bit too high on these motor shafts i'm going to recommend that you get some propellers with this rig there's nothing wrong with these gem fan 1208 props but 
I really don't like that I was not able to push them all the way down on the motor shafts. Um, and you really do not want to be like hammer. Like, look, with, with these tiny whoops, everything is itty bitty. And so if you're like muscling anything, stop. You're about to break something. And so I could certainly just keep muscling these propellers down on these motor shafts. And I would, I, but I run the risk of pushing a motor shaft down through the bell. So I'm going to recommend that you get some of these newer propellers right along with this. My favorites are the Gemfan Byblades. They are 1210, 1210, 1 1.2 inches, 10 uh, point, I don't know what it is, but 10 pitch. Uh, the the uh, the new lightweight Gemfan 1219S is also going to be a great option. We're going to run those next. Uh, or the HQ as I call them, YOLO, ultra lightweight, 31 millimeter propellers are also gonna be a great option. Uh, what should I put this on first? Let me actually put this onto by blades first. 28,000, yeah, 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 yeah. So 28,000 KV is a little bit less than what I'm used to. So putting this onto by blades first is gonna give me the potentially the least amount of power um, and then we're going to move it to these tri-blades, which will make up for that slightly lower KV than I'm used to. Yeah, so this is the prop that I pushed on here. So this is the other problem with muscling a propeller onto a motor, is eventually you're going to have to get that propeller off, and it's going to be a son of a bitch to get off. So that's what I'm running into right now. Even with the prop popper from Tiny Whoop, which is brilliant. Oh, boy. Yikes, man. Yeah, all right. So when you get this thing, don't go muscling the propellers on because it's really, really, really easy to bend or break one of these motor shafts when you're trying to get these props off, even with the, the prop popper. Uh, so here's how you check if you've bent your motor shafts. Just super, super, super quick. We're going to plug a battery in and you're going to flip it up into turtle mode. Oh, nope. I got to change the module again. All right. That's going to bind any second. Come on, give me that flashing green light. Give it. There it is. All right. It's now bound. We're going to go into turtle mode and I'm just going to go into the diagonals I'm gonna, and I'm going to do it very gently. So we're going to arm. I'm going to hold the rig in my hand and I'm just going to feel. Spin that motor up a little bit. Next one. Next one, next one. Believe it or not, the left front motor has started to bend the motor shaft. The left front motor, uh, motor number four, is ever so slightly more vibrating harder than, than the rest. And that's what you're looking for. Um, you're looking to see if one motor vibrates harder than the rest. Technically, this motor might have come from the factory, not quite balanced as well. These little itty bitty motors are super hard to balance. So this might have been like this out of the box. I bet you it wasn't though. The props were sitting up on the motor shafts, which is not great. Um, and I just did crash this a bunch. So and and the front the the front motors always take more abuse than the rears. So. It's on the front and the propeller was up on the motor shaft. So that leads me to believe that I, I might have smacked it uh, and, and bent this motor shaft just ever so slightly. Not so much that it's going to really affect the way that this thing flies, but yeah, especially because it's a it's on a pretty tame uh, uh, pid tune. So these are Gem Fan 1210 by blades. I've got counterclockwise, clockwise, and then I've got clockwise and I need another counterclockwise. There we go. All right, cool. So these propellers are going to very easily drop down, all, drop all the way down onto these motor shafts. It's one of the really nice things about these uh, Gemfan 1210 propellers. And now I want to show you what that looks like. This is important, my friends. This is what it should look like in comparison to before that the motor shaft was not sticking out of the top of the motor. Can you please focus? Little Logitech camera, there we go. 
That's what you want to see is the motor shaft poking out of the top. And then when you look at the bottom of the propeller, you want almost no gap between the bottom of the propeller and the bell. This is going to be so much more durable because it's a shorter lever, right? Less leverage on it. That's what you want to see. And if you tried to do that on the propellers that it came with, the, the, the tops of these propellers are, you would need to drill them out, I think, a little bit, which is, which is kind of strange because I've had plenty of these Gemfan uh, 1208 propellers in the past, and they've never had that problem. But these uh, smoke crotch gray ones, I can specifically see that the top of the, the hole in the top of the propeller looks a little bit smaller. And that's what's causing that problem. So I'm going to recommend that you, the first thing you do is take these props that it comes with off uh, because you're not going to be able to push them down all the way down in the motor shaft and you're going to end up bending motors, uh, motor shafts, if you crash it hard. So now I'm going to put my favorite Tiny Whoop propeller of all time on here, the 1210 Byblades, and we're going to see how it is. All right, cool. Checking each one of them. Looks good. All right. Uh, and of course, you know, props in versus props out. Just look at the way the, the propellers are going to spin and away you shall go. Uh, this is a beat up old battery. This is a blue marker battery, just like that first one that we flew. Let me not fly this. Uh, it's already 945. Let me fly all of my fresh batteries for the rest of this live stream. And there we go. Um, I guess if I had to, to, to find something else to complain about, uh, the, 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 uh, a 30 connector is a little bit too short, good for weight savings. Uh, but it, it forces you to run the battery kind of far forward. I, I would love for this to be a little bit longer. Um, but that's pretty nitpicky if I'm honest, especially with how good this thing flies. My God. I'll put up with a lot of nitpicky stuff for something that flies this good, man. This is super impressive. All right, here's a here's a little thing. So I just put fresh propellers on here, and now listen what happens when I arm it. Hear that? That is one of the propellers hitting a part of the duct. Well, it could be hitting the motor wires. So the first thing you want to do is push the motor wires down and make sure it's not smacking into the motor wires. All right, they're now down. Let's arm it again. Still there. One of the propellers is hitting a part of one of the ducts. Easiest way to fix this, super quick, kick on uh, crack, uh, uh, turtle mode, arm it, hold it, and just spin each propeller all the way up. Why is that acting weird? <whistles> turtle mode is acting a little strange. You gotta really ease into turtle mode on this. That's kind of weird. When you spin these all the way up to full throttle in reverse, that is going to, the, the ducts, here, let me explain this to you. The ducts are like this. The propeller is here and the duct is like this. It's narrower on the bottom than the top. When you spin the propellers the wrong way, they make the thrust go upwards and the blades bend downwards. So the duct is like this, the propeller is catching somewhere here. So if in turtle mode, if you ramp it up, it's gonna bend the propellers, the blades down a little bit, and then they're gonna self clearance. And so now that I did that, I'll, I'm gonna arm it normally again. It's not gonna arm. Oh, I unplugged the battery. <laughs> That'll do it every time. Um, well, hold on, let me let the, Seller, I'm gonna calibrate. There it is. So now I'm gonna arm it again, and it's not it's not making that noise anymore. Cool. That's a really 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 quick easy way to self clearance a propeller, and it's self clearancing. Um, it it doesn't throw off the balance of the propeller, right? Because it's self clearancing itself. So it's gonna take a little bit of plastic off the one blade. The second blade is gonna come around. It's gonna take that same little bit of plastic off. So it's a way to to self clearance them props real quick and keep them balanced. Oh boy. Gem fan 1210 by blades. Yeah, this feels good. This feels normal. Ah, overshot it a little bit. So with by blades, 
you're going to get a little bit more slide. Um, it's kind of hard to see. That was crash recovery, by the way. Um, it's kind of hard to see it, but I can feel it. And I actually really like the little bit of extra slide because it allows me to do more of these like off throttle, hurl it across the room, oh. <laughs> hurl it across the room maneuvers that I, I just get such a kick out of like that. Like that's the thing. That's the thing that's really changed in tiny whooping over the last year is that they've become three dimensional and, and you can fly a tiny whoop just like every single other rig that you've ever built and flown outside. I also like with these propellers, I'm just kind of used to them. So the little throttle blips that I do to catch a rig, see that? It's like, see how damn near perfect I can catch that. Um, the Biblade propellers are really lightweight and they spin up really fast. Although the new HQ props are unbelievably even lighter than these, which is just bananas, but still. Uh, these Biblades are very, very quick to spin up. Ooh, that was, I got a little lost in that. Ooh! Jesus! <laughs> This is a really good... I am staggered that this is a bind and fly. See how that catch... See how, like, the... the ca <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that whizzed right by my face. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, I'm just used to these props, man. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Missed it. Uh, and so, yeah, this is cool to fly this with a propeller that I've got, like, easily a thousand batteries through. And I've actually flown a ton of batteries with these propellers on Happy Model 0702, Crash Recovery, thank you, uh, 26,000s. But, man, these have a lot more power than the 26,000s. These are, uh, this is a really nice set of motors. 28,000 kV. I used to say that 30,000 kV is where things started to get really interesting. Um, but I might need to change that to 28,000 because this is a really nice amount of power. I'm usually pretty, uh, pretty power hungry. For the record, for anybody that doesn't watch my live streams, I crash a lot. I, I go for huge moves. And I just, like, love the fact that we can crash a lot. And you just turtle mode back over and away you go. Oh, God. Um, away you go. And, like, if you build a tiny whoop right, it's really durable. So, like, I, I like to take advantage of all those things and just throw it, you know, just hurl it towards stuff and see what happens. <laughs> like, ooh, 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 we didn't do a mirror flip yet. Here we go. Mirror flip life. You gotta sneak up on it. You gotta sneak up on it. And then, ooh. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Aye. Yeah, so, uh, and also, I really do like to test durability on this stuff. A little shallow there. Um, and, yeah, you gotta crash a lot to test durability. So, it kind of all works. I, I like flying this way. And then it really helps with the with the durability testing. Oh, I got I forgot to go upstairs with it. Hold on, let's put a fresh battery on. We'll go upstairs. I could have run that battery a little bit farther down, uh, but I want to put a fresh one on and fire it around upstairs. Uh, all right, a little bit hard to unplug that battery just now. That's pretty standard fare for fresh BT 2.0 or uh, A30 leads. That will loosen up over time. Um, I actually like that about them. I would rather them be too tight initially, and then they're going to stretch out. That was me trying to raise my eyebrows, but I had goggles on. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this is not a family show for anybody that thought it was. All right, here we go. Let's go upstairs with it, uh, with the, with the bye blades. Oh, there's somebody upstairs.
Good power. Nothing wrong with that. Ooh, okay. So we did get into a little bit of prop wash there, but I put it directly into its own wake. Uh, that, although that little hit there, that little judder there, uh, look, the, the PID tune is very soft on this. You could very easily push that D gain slider up or the master multiplier slider up, and it would almost certainly take care of that little bit of prop wash that we just got there. But like I was talking about earlier, leave it. As long as you're not selling your footage or really like are desperate to impress your friends, leave that stuff. And then you know when you put the thing into dirty air and you can start flying better. Oh, Teddy Spaghetti. Here he is. He wants to eat the Mobula 6 2024. Ready for the most adorable dog you've ever seen, my friends? There he is. The schnauziest schnauzer of all the schnauzers. Teddy Spaghetti. We call him that because he's got worms. Just kidding. He doesn't have worms. Come on down, Teddy. Come on, little buddy. Teddy, come here. Teddy, come here, buddy. Come on, come be on the stream. Teddy, what are you doing? He's always down to come downstairs. Come on down. Come on down, you handsome devil. What? He doesn't like the Mobula 6 2024. All right, that's a big ding. I got a, I got a big problem with that. The Mobula 6 20, confirmed, confirmed. Mobula 6 2024 scares dogs, confirmed. That's a that's a big that's a big con in the pros and cons list. Man, he is always down to to come down here and be a maniac. Oh god! I don't know what that was. That was just me being a donkey. It feels great on the gem fan by blades. Ooh, went through the side. Didn't mean to do that, but I'll take it. Oh, a little shallow there. Oh, did you hear it? Did you hear it and see it? It just sat in its dirty air and just wiggle, 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 wiggled. You want to fix that in the OSD? Here we go. Ready? We're going to fix that. Profile, simplified tuning, D gains. The D gain slider is basically too low. D gain is what eats most of the prop wash. From 1.0 up to 1.4, that'll pretty much kill any of that prop wash. Let me see if I can put it into... Oh, that was awkward. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Get out of the burrito blanket. So that's a pretty aggressive prop wash move I just did there, and there wasn't even a shutter. Ah, easy, fella. Those are super aggressive prop wash moves that'll bring prop wash out of most stuff, and there's none. We'll fly it a little bit more, and you'll just not see that shuttering prop wash again, more than likely. Actually, let me really try to bring it out. It's really easy to bring it out up here. Ready? There, it's gone. Just, just gone. We'll try it again. Oh, one little tiny... Hello, Maggie. Uh, one little tiny judder there that was almost imperceptible. There you go, my friends. There's an undercoverable crash for you. Uh, let me kick on the beeper. Find it because I know it's oh it on my bag. <laughs> oh, not bad, not bad, not bad. So yeah, if you want to get rid of all the prop wash, there you go. Um, and you could, I could probably keep pushing that. I could probably push that up to 1.6, but I would want to chase it with the second slider. Your your ratio of P term to D term is really important. Um, in, in a future live stream, we will dive more into the tuning of this. Um, but, yeah, for tonight, we're going to kind of leave it where it's at. Because I do want to try another couple of propellers here. But, man, it, it's not lacking for power on these Gemfan uh, 1210 by blades, that's for sure. And look at the <laughs> look at the runtime. Four, <laughs> over four minutes. Jesus. So by blades are all, are always going to be more um, uh, more efficient than tri blades. So that's why we got over four minutes, even though we were hammering it pretty good on there. Uh, now we're gonna move it over to the new Gem Fan lightweight uh, tri blades 12, 1219 tri blades. 
And then we will finish off with the HQ YOLO tri-blades, as I call them. Uh, take a quick look at the props. Oh, 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 something else that I wanted to take a look at that is really important and nobody really talks about is where the propellers sit in the ducts. Uh, this is a new frame, so we want to take a look at this. Ideally, what you want is for the propellers to run inside of the duct and, and for the whole tip of the propeller blade here to be inside of the duct so that when when you crash the duct pushes into the propeller and the propeller doesn't blade doesn't pop out under the duct a lot of frames have the, the so this is the cockroach 65 v3 it's my current favorite frame and one of the things it does really well is center the propellers in the meat of the duct most frames don't do that most frames uh and I think this is one of them. Now, this is actually pretty good. So you see how much lower it is? So what can happen here in crashes, and we'll actually check it right now, is, yep, and so that is happening. So when the, there it is, right? So when, when you hit something, the, the frame can pop up and over the duct. I don't love that, but, like, this is one of the first frames ever <laughs> to not do that. See, when it, when it crashes it pushes on the whole propeller. The propeller does not pop out the bottom. So this, what I can tell you is that this frame is not worse than any of the other frames. It, it actually might be a little bit better than most of the other frames. When I say most of the other frames, basically what I mean is the Meteor 65 and the Meteor 65 Air um, and the Weebleed Crown. The, all three of those frames, well, so the old school Meteor 65 and the uh, Weebleed Crown, they have the exact same duct height. Um, and they are a little bit worse than this new frame. Not much though, they're pretty much the same. Uh, the Meteor 65 Air I've found to be kind of the worst. The Meteor 65 Air is also a frame that like, it's so light and so wobbly that you're gonna have to back your PID tune off from other frames. And then I've found it to be unbelievably fragile. So I don't recommend the Meteor 65 Air to anyone just because it's so fragile. And and you really it's really hard to tune it. Um, this frame is, is acceptable, I'm going to say, in terms of the duct height. All that being said, if I were to upgrade this rig, I would... I would put it into a cockroach 65 v3 frame this this frame is awesome um it's gonna more it's gonna put the battery more central like i showed you earlier um and it's got it's gonna have the pro the the uh, propellers rotating in the ducts uh much more centered uh which helps with durability and the propellers not getting all chipped to hell and yeah that's what you want all right let's get these by blades off of here and put some tri-blades on. 10.01, look at me go. Uh, okay. Again, sorry that I'm basically completely ignoring chat. Um, I've got a lot to get through and I don't want this to be a four hour long live stream. People bitch and moan that my streams are too long anyway. <laughs> uh, Friday at what, seven o'clock? Yeah, Friday at seven o'clock, uh, come on back and we will really dive into this thing and discuss it. Uh, this is the first that I've gotten to try these Gemfan Ultralate Tri-Blades. So this is pretty exciting. Right, right, left, left. All right, so the first thing I wanna see is will they drop all the way down on the motors, which is actually really important. Uh, I regret boy tofts with a $20 super chat. Thank you, brother. Ooh, these fit. So one of my other favorite things about the gem fan 1210 by blades is they're perfect on when you put them on the motor shafts. They're not too loose. They're not too tight. Hubble, hubble. Uh, and so they're easy to put on, but they don't fly off. And then they're easy to remove. These gem fan tries are perfect as well. They must've used the exact same internal, um, uh, diameter on these guys. So that's, Awesome, I love that about these. Here's your little mini propeller review on these uh, Gemfan 1219Ss. Yeah, that's just right. I can just, I've put a million of these props on and off, so I know how much, I know like if I push them on with a certain amount of force, 
that they'll be either a pain in the ass to remove or they won't. Um, Irik Reproitoff says, thanks for some good tips. You're certainly welcome, my friend. Thanks for being an amazing member of the FPV community. Uh, I had the, 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 awesome, uh, the awesome experience to work with Irik on uh, Joshua's website, fpvknowitall.com. Uh, and we had like weekly calls for like six months. It was great getting to know the guy. Um, super cool dude. Uh, all right. Gemfan1219 S's. So these should now take a little bit of runtime down, but this should make a little bit more power. Um, and then it should also make a little bit more grip, which I actually don't like, but I'm starting to get used to, I guess, a little bit. Thanks again, Irik. That is a. Very generous super chat, my man. Much appreciated. All right, here we go. Oh, I also didn't have to clearance them, so they made them a little bit small. Yeah, I can definitely tell that they're a little bit grippier. Oh, God. So that, just now, that weird little rearward pitch was actually crash recovery kind of screwing me over. Every once in a while, crash recovery gets confused or something. Um, where am I? What What am I looking at right now? I mean, what is... Oh, there we go, okay. I was against the fireplace. Um, I usually really don't like the way that tri-blades fly, but I'm trying to get used to them because the... The HQ YOLO lightweight 31s are a really good propeller. Um, these feel just like them, though, which is a good thing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look at that power. Oh, boy. Yeah, so... What? What? Where is it? Where are you? I think it might be in the sim rig or something. What? Where the hell is it? Hello? Where are you, little? Oh, it was like in the corner there. That's weird. Uh, that's a one in a million crash. All right. Uh, I don't think this is for sale yet, to be honest, guys. Uh, but somebody in chat will potentially correct me on that. Ooh, wow, that was a big throw. Yeah, these... Uh, so, the propellers that this thing comes with are 1208. 1 1.2 inches, and then 8 pitch. These are 1219. 1 1.2 inches, 19 pitch. Almost... Well, yeah, not almost. Twice as much pitch. Uh, so, you're going to get a bunch more power with these, which... <laughs> I couldn't decide if I wanted to go over or under it. Um, and that's going to help out for me with the fact that these motors are a little bit of a lower KV than I'm used to. Again, I'm used to like 30,000, 32,000, 36,000. Oh, that's the mega power loop there. Ah, I can never get it twice in a row. Um, yeah, this feels even more normal. Oh, <laughs> It, son uh with these propellers on it oh that was a <laughs> i can't believe i didn't get that uh, <laughs> can't believe i didn't get that out of there cleanly that was kind of a silly crash Woo! all right let's do some uh proximity ish stuff with these so all right well hold on uh I'm not going to be able to do the proximity stuff that I want to do without a little bit more uh, throttle expo. So let me just add a little more here. Especially now with these propellers, it's making some more power. I'm going to go all the way up to 40. This is a lot. Most people would not want this much, but I really, really like throttle expo. It just lets me really finely adjust my uh, altitude. Oh, for God's sakes. Hold on, let me... The, the midpoint feels like it might be a little bit off. Yeah, it is. Midpoint is a little bit too high. Well, no, hold on. Once I'm moving fast... Nah, midpoint's right. Midpoint's at 40. 
Once I'm moving fast. Now midpoint is a little bit, a little bit too high. I thought it felt a little weird. Hold on, real quick. Let's just move the midpoint down a little bit to 38. Little tiny changes in the midpoint actually make a big difference. I have a whole live stream where I talked about throttle expo and how to set it and what everything does and this feels even better now with the throttle expo now we're talking it's still really hard to fly these things a millimeter off the carpet Ooh. <laughs> oh boy that was a close one ah really couldn't have hooked me up on that oh you get stuck under something in the corner like this just do this and it'll like pry itself out is it just me or does this camera not look as good all of a sudden? Looks like we might have a little bit of jello, possibly. We'll see when we oh we'll see when we change propellers if it cleans up a little bit. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Hook a brother up. Oh, battery's too low! Three minutes and fifty-seven seconds, even on pitchy ass tri-blades. Uh let me pull this battery. Put it on a checker and we'll see what it bounces back to. It is at 3.47, 348. Uh, let's see if it keeps bouncing up. 349. And is it going to hit 3.5? Will it get there? Will it get to 3.5? I, I Yeah, there it is, 3.5. 351. It'll probably bounce back to 355, which is a little low. I, I like to have them bounce back up to 3.7. All right, so let's look at the... Uh, no, nah, the camera looks fine when it's on the ground. Let's see. Once I get up in the air, is there a little bit of jello going on? Is it, or just, is it just me? Hold on. Let's land it on this book here. And we'll look at... Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> let's look at something bright and colorful. All right, and then we'll arm it. Nah, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'm just not used to this camera. I'm used to the Runcam Nano 3. Woo! I don't even know what I hit there. I don't even know what's over there to hit. Man, this, this... There we go. This thing is light, yo. Lightweight fixes everything. This has me wanting to make, oh boy, make uh, my ultimate builds even lighter because this is incredible. Wow. I am, I am really impressed. And I mean, we've crashed this a bunch. Oh, damn it. We've crashed it a bunch. It seems to be totally fine. Um, I will say like, I haven't really hammered this that bad yet. Uh, let's go back upstairs with it. I would like to get some big, nasty crashes into it to really kind of test this frame. I'm not going to do it on purpose, but if I fly up here a bunch, plus maybe Teddy will, will come down and hang out with us. Okay. There's one, and now it's going to come all the way down to the ground. That was a good one. That was a big hit. We'll see how it is when it comes back. Oh, fan tried to get me. Uh-oh! I'm down the hallway. Oh, boy. I don't even know where I'm at right now. Oh, God, I made it all the way into the bedroom. That's what she said. So this is a, you know, th these ceilings are high, right? Like, look at this room. Th these are probably like 25 foot ceilings. And this thing, so like if you were to fly in a warehouse, this would be a good analog for that. It's got plenty of power to really move around this space pretty comfortably. The, the 26,000 KV702s don't quite... The, up here, they just don't feel as comfortable. This thing feels totally comfortable up here. Now, I do have the higher pitch tri-blades on it, but I think you should change your propellers right away. So you'll have this much power as well.
Ow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I tried to force it through there. I knew it wasn't lined up, but I thought I could maybe get away with one. Oh, God. Oh, boy. We're falling down the stairs, friends. All right, we got some we got some hits on this. At the end of this battery, I'll be interested to see how it is. Ow! <laughs> oh, so close! <laughs> Just trying to back it through this double here. Oh, come on now. There we go. Oh! Rejected. Oh, no! Not enough fight. This rig, this is fun! This is nuts, dude. I can't believe this is a bind and fly. What the hell? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, I am I am all the way in on this. I mean, as long as it's durable. Oh, the battery! Ooh! <laughs> all right. So you can see, um, this is this was a fresh battery, but we we're only at 347. I way over discharged it. But we were upstairs a bunch. Like I pushed this battery hard. Oh, come on, come unplugged. Ooh, this battery is gonna be dead, dead, dead. No, this happens sometimes, and I don't like it when these. BT 2.0 and A30 connectors are fresh. They're really hard hard to get unplugged. I mean, just don't super duper over discharge your batteries and you'll be fine. But um, yeah, damn. Uh, okay, so we crashed it hard. Hard, hard. And it's fine. I mean, I, look, I for me to give it like a thumbs up durability wise, I want to have 50 of those crashes, uh, but it doesn't, my guess is that it's not fragile because if a rig is fragile, that hard of a hit would, would have broken something. Uh, and it took it and it seems fine. Let's swatch. Let's switch the propellers. Last set of pro propellers we're going to run are the HQ ultralight 31s and in a future live stream, uh, we are going to compare the HQ props with these gem fan props. We'll weigh them, uh, fly them back to back. But for right now, I just want to get a couple more batteries on this. And then we're going to wrap this live stream up. Cool. Uh, quick questions related to this rig. Put them in the chat. Tag me with Ciat by typing Ciat FPV, no space in between it. Um, and I might squeeze one or two questions in here at the end. Ready? Go. All right. Man, I got up into some hair. These things are hairy. I don't know where. Oh, it was when I it was when I crashed it down on the uh, uh, by the shoes. What do you guys think? Yeah, about this rig. What's happening here? Come off. I'm not centered on there. I'm not centered on there. No, this one propeller is just being a jerk. Come off of there. You little maniac. Come on. There we go. All right. HQ YOLO props. Let's see. Steven Woodruff says, what was the all-up weight uh, for it with the Byblades? Great question. Hold on. The without propellers. Wow. It's 16.95 without propellers. With propellers. Wow, I didn't think propellers would be that heavy. Uh, 17.64 with propellers dry, uh, all up 26.1. God, is that light? This thing is really light. Um, it's easy to make tiny whoops really light. It's difficult to make tiny whoops really light and really durable. Uh, and that's so far, that's been, that's pretty impressive. I, I'm, 
I'm, uh, but again, any durability talk really needs to wait for at least 50 more batteries, in my opinion. Um, just because, yeah, I mean, most things are going to be, uh, durable initially. It's, uh, it's that sustained abuse that, that tends to break these things. And it's that sustained abuse that doesn't break the ultimate freestyle setup. That's, that's one of the more impressive things about it. Um, so the HQ props are a little bit tighter on the motor shafts, but they're not, not so much that, um, that it like bugs me or anything like that, but they are noticeably tighter than the, uh, gem fan by blades or the 1219 S's. Eh, they're about the same as the gem fan by blades come to think of it. Uh, AJ Farris says, is the UFW is a 10? What does that mean? If the UFW is a 10, oh, 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 uh, what would you rate this one off of first impressions? For a bind and fly, this is a 10, hands down. I, I am, I'm absolutely staggered that, um, yeah, at, at the performance of this right out of the box, especially once the propellers have been swapped over. Um, the uh this the direct soldered motors knocks it from a 10 down to a nine uh what else uh what else can i dock a point for i, I don't know about this frame i i don't love the way the battery sits all the way up front on this frame maybe that would knock it down to an eight and a half uh about it i think it's maybe an eight and a half <laughs> ram Dango says 26 grams walk snail yeah that's true well you wouldn't you wouldn't want to run uh, there'd be no reason to run this aio with walk snail because then you'd have two vtx's um so yeah i mean i am gonna take a look at where they're saving weight though uh all right cool here it is on the uh, hq yolo tri-blades whoa all right, so here is a rig. Here is what it sounds like when your PID tune is cranked up a little too far. Listen to when I chop the throttle, ready? Hear it? Hear the second little whirr. You could almost see it there. Now that the battery has sagged down a little bit, it's not doing it anymore, but if you put a fresh battery on and you do a throttle blip, and when you chop the throttle, it it then um, blips the throttle. Ah! Again, I couldn't decide if I was going under it or over it. That was just me being dumb. Uh, that means your PID tune is a little bit too cranked, and it's it's kind of on the edge. It, it hasn't done that with any of the gem fan props. So usually what that means is that these propellers are not as well balanced. Um, this is also a, a brand new set of these HQ propellers. Uh, one of my complaints about these HQ propellers is that they're so lightweight that they're kind of fragile. Um, and so, ah, tried to catch it. And so, yeah, if this was a, if this was a set of these props that I had flown before, I could understand that, but kind of interesting that. Uh, these are, this is a fresh set and it's still doing that. Ow. We're going to talk about that when we evaluate these propellers and the new gem fans on a future live stream. Maybe Friday, maybe not, but maybe Friday. See that direction change? See how it changed directions there? That's hard, man. Like, I'm carrying a head of steam directly towards the wall, and it just stops. That is it being lightweight. Uh, that is these HQ props making really good power. And that is 28,000 KV being, like, just enough for a big power tiny... <laughs> Oh, I haven't done the ultimate Maddie flip yet with this thing. Let's see if I can get it. 
I'm not consistent with this at all. Oh my god, I can't even fly through the, the gate all of a sudden. Oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> Come on now. All right, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Uh, you know what I'm also noticing? There's very little duct in view, which means potentially that this has a little bit more up tilt than what I'm used to. I do consider this to be like the racing version. And so for racing, you want more up tilt. Um, so it kind of makes sense. Maybe the, the plug version, uh, they'll have a mount on it. There we go. That's got a little bit less up tilt. I doubt it. I, I, I'm sure they'll put the same mount on it, but wishful thinking. Ah, having a hard time with the gnarliest Matty flip of all the Matty flips tonight, but that's all right. Easy. Oh man, I'm having a hard time with everything now. There we go. That's what I was trying to do a second ago. Ooh, I didn't even see those gates. Came out of nowhere. Ooh. Like doing the Matty flip through this uh, as well. Yeah, there we go. Oh, <laughs> almost, almost. Let's try some. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Let's try some low elevation play around stuff here. Oh god! Ooh! What? 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 We're good. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. oh my god. We had a good run, man. We had a good run. It's late. I'm getting tired. I'm hungry as hell. Uh, I would actually also recommend you move your um, uh, low voltage warnings up a little bit. Uh, that's the first time that I've seen that low battery warning. Man, I'm having a hard time getting this unplugged. It has nothing to do with Happy Model. That has to do with uh, the A30 plug. Uh, let me show you how to do that. And I actually want to do it on this rig real quick. So we're going to hook it up to Betaflight. Uh, CBFPV says, what's the price? No idea. Uh, it's not available for sale yet. So who knows what it's going to cost. Uh, Four Little Pig says, what's the parts list for the Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop? Uh, old school Mobula 6 that you can no longer get anymore. Uh, motors, it depends, but basically Tiny Whoop uh, 0702, 30,000 or 32,000 or 36,000. Uh, uh, Gemfan 1210 by blades, BT 2.0 lead, and that's it. Super simple build. What am I doing? Uh, I need to go into power and battery, and I'm just going to bump these up. Bump this from 2.9 to 3.0. Bump this from 3.1 to 3.2. I'm going to recommend everybody do that. That's going to that's gonna keep you from just punishing your batteries to death. Uh, let's put another fresh battery on this. This is going to be our last battery that we fly here for this live stream. Uh, I want to see if it if it acts up again uh, on a on a fresh battery. And uh, see if the PID loop gets all upset. Good. This is my last uh, newish battery that I've got here. I'm just going to go over to this view because there's a really good chance that I'll forget to do it. And I don't want to spend this whole last battery in Stevie Wonder mode with you watching me go with the goggles on. I'm going to do it now. All right, there we go. So let's see. Let's see if it gets all upset on a freshly charged battery. Yep. See that? Battery has now discharged a little bit, and it's fine. Um, to fix that, all I would need to do is come in here and take a little bit of that degain out that I added in. It won't do that from the factory. Um, but again, what that says to me, which is kind of interesting, is that these Gemfan YOLO ultralight tri-blades are just not quite as well balanced as the, uh, as the, I'm sorry, HQ ultralight tri-blades. I think I just said Gemfan by accident. Uh, are not as well balanced as the Gemfan 1219S 
ultra lightweight tri blades or the gem fan uh 1210 by blades what was that about Woo -hoo -hoo! that little stall Ah, I, th I thought I could maybe just let it drift up into these, but it wasn't quite there. The the slightly lower KV and lower... So, folks that have been watching me fly Tiny Whoops a lot will probably notice that I've been crashing significantly less tonight flying this. Uh, that is... The, the fact that it's lighter, it's also that it's lower KV and lower power. More power makes these things much harder to fly, um, but it's more fun and you can and it, it unlocks some some different like superpower needed moves. Um, man, I can't talk all of a sudden. My brain just completely shat the bed. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> I don't hate that. If I were to upgrade this, though, I would put it onto 30,000 KV motors. Um, I don't think I'm gonna, because it's really good as it is, and I hate direct soldering motors. Um, oh, boy. That is such a big power loop for... So, like, look at the distance. Look at the distance on that power loop. It's through here, and it's all the way back here. It's, it's like, easily 10, 12 feet. Any rig that can do that mega power loop is a rig that has really good power. Oh, I totally missed it on that one. And yeah, my phone's going off like a son of a bitch tonight. All right. Last little bit here, and then we're going to wrap this stream on up. Um, I did my best in terms of crashing this thing to get some durability. We'll go back upstairs real quick. I'll try to get one more big hit in. Oh, it's dark up here now. Oh, farts. Yeah, it, this ain't going to work. I can't. Well, here's a good low light test of the camera. These are the only lights that are really giving any actual brightness. Yeah, I'm flying. This is this is a bit much. If I crash this, I might not. I might have to go up and recover it. So we're gonna come down. You know what? Let's let's tumble it down the stairs. I hate to to crash it on purpose, but well, wait, no, no, no. Here we'll try this. I'll try to do a big, full speed stair dive with it, and I'll probably screw up. Ready? Here we go. Yeah. See, I knew that would happen. Eh, that wasn't that hard of a crash. Let's try it again. We'll do a big corkscrew. Oh God. That hit pretty hard. I want it to tumble down the stairs, though. This is a move I've been meaning to work on, actually. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Let's try it one more time. Oh, God. That's not a very hard crash, all things considered. What? Come on. There we go. All right, one more try. All right, we'll get up ahead of steam. We'll just fire it down there. Yeah, okay. Battery's dead. Ah, uh, those were not that hard in terms of crashes. Um, but the, the yeah, I mean those were alright. We we put some we put some abuse into it for sure. Uh let's take a look. So we've got a bunch of hair, as always. And Ducts are still fine. Canopy's still fine. That rear screw still has that angle on it. Come on, focus. That rear screw has a bunch of angle on it. That's the thing that concerns me the most. Um, I would definitely recommend putting a longer screw in. Th this, this style canopy, I think, is just... It's just pushing on that, obviously. Uh, but nothing's broken. Camera's still in. Antennas are fine. Uh, let me throw a battery on it and I'm going to spin it up in, uh, in, uh, turtle mode while I'm holding it to see if I can feel any extra vibrations from earlier. Although this is now on a different set of propellers. This will actually be an interesting little test. Hold on. 
Very smooth. Still a little bit vibey as it was before. Um, very smooth. Very smooth. Now nah, we're fine. This motor number four is a little bit more beat up, but that that's it was before, um, which it, it could have just been like that out of the box or that could have happened when those uh, factory propellers were sitting really high on the motor shafts. Uh, don't run it with the propellers that it comes with, in my opinion. Take those propellers directly off and get rid of them. Um, buy yourself a set of the, the two propellers, like, uh, in fair, in, in fairness, I am sponsored by Gemfan. Uh, they don't send me money. They send me propellers every once in a while. I love their propellers. I always have, uh, HQ also makes phenomenal propellers. These HQ ultra lightweight 31 millimeter propellers are awesome. Awesome. Awesome propellers. Uh, I am really surprised not surprised I i'm really happy with these gem fan 1219 s's um they are better balanced they seem to be better balanced than these uh and i don't know I, I come friday or sunday and we'll talk more about these propellers but uh my recommendation is going to be to not run it on the propellers that it comes with because you could hurt your motors take them off right away replace them with uh, my top choice is kind of always going to be the Gemfan 1210 Biblades. Next choice is going to be the Gemfan 1219S's. Uh, third choice is going to be the HQ Ultralight 31 millimeters. You cannot go wrong with any three of these propellers. You will love all three of these propellers. They're, uh, to be honest, buy all three of them and make your own mind up. Um, but yeah, all three of these props are going to be fantastic on here. Uh, you're going to get more power from all three of these propellers. And you're going to get more durability. So don't run it on the propellers that it comes with. Look, don't crash it hard on the props that it comes with. Also, don't push the props that it comes with all the way down to the motor shaft. You will wreck the motors. So just get them off. Get it with some propellers and sw sw switch it up right away. Uh, none of the changes that I made in beta flight are essential. So fly it as it is out of the box, get a feel for it. Don't update anything. Always fly bind and flies exactly as they are out of the box, because if they're broken, you can just contact who you bought it from and say, yo, I put a battery in it and it was wrecked versus yo, I, uh, I changed 18 things in the flight firmware and I updated it from 4.4 to 4.5 and now it doesn't work. And they're going to go, oh my God, another pain in the ass that wrecked their quad. Always, always, always fly bind and flies as they are out of the box for at least a couple of batteries. Cool. Uh, this is a must have tiny whoop as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you don't already have the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop, if, if you have the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop, uh, I don't know why you would buy this, to be honest. Uh, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But if you've already got, you know, my preferred crazy upgraded setup. Uh, you've got motor plugs, which are amazing. You've got almost the same runtime. I guess if you're desperate for more runtime, uh, maybe get this because it's a little bit lighter. But you could make the ultimate freestyle setup a little bit lighter. Uh, Rennie screws. Uh, where are they? This AIO must be lighter than, than the previous one. It would make sense. It's it's more cut down. It doesn't have the motor plugs. doesn't have the camera plugs. So, yeah. Um, this is fantastic. I, 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 I don't know what else to say about it. it. It's really good. This frame seems really good, too. I'm, I'm super interested to see what this new uh, frame weighs. Freshbread says, would you rather have ceramic antenna on that or the wire? Uh, the ceramic antennas are heavier than the wires and they typically don't work as well. Um, so yeah, the ceramic antennas, when on, on the old Mobula 6 uh, uh, AIOs, when the ceramic antenna would break off, I would be happy because I'd replace it with a little piece of wire and it would get better reception and it would be lighter and more durable. So yeah, I don't like the ceramic antennas. Uh, 
Grepboy says, does that flight controller give you the ability to solder motor SM connectors to it? Uh, it does not. The motor pads are spaced apart a lot. Um, so yeah, you will not be able to add plugs to this AIO, but um, Happy Model let me know that there is a plug version of this AIO coming. Uh, Brunoku says, can you drop the up tilt by using the other mounting holes? You cannot. This is on the minimum up tilt here. This is on the minimum up tilt hole. Um, and yeah, this has a little bit more up tilt than what I'm used to, but it's not that bad. Uh, th this is a, a really good freestyle up tilt. I was a little bit worried about that, but yeah, no complaints on the amount of up tilt. This is just about right. Fresh bread with the last comment of the live stream. He says, only thing I don't like about the GemFan 1219S is the motor shaft stabs my thumb every time due to the uh, to the hub height. Yeah, the 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 GemFan by blades are like that. Um, that's a small price to pay for the propeller sitting farther down on the shaft, being lighter and extra durable. So there we go. Actually, Paul Tsang with the last comment of the live stream. Can you solder a wire on the AIO and where slash how? Um, uh, I don't understand that question. Uh, no, this is on the minimum up tilt, right, nine. Uh, I don't understand that question. Can you solder a wire on the AIO and where slash how? Um, I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, antenna wire. It, it, it's already got one. It, it's got uh, a piece of wire for the antenna already. It does not have a, a ceramic antenna, so you don't even have to worry about doing that. Um, so yeah. Cool. Thanks for hanging, friends. Uh, happy model. The slowest of claps. Uh, don't love that the motors are soldered, but good lord. Everything else about this is incredibly impressive. Uh, can't speak to the durability because I haven't hammered it quite hard enough yet but it's so light that it's probably going to be very very durable um we'll see subscribe to the channel and come on back and we'll do some more well i'm just gonna keep flying this because it flies fucking great um so yeah i'm gonna keep flying it and that's how we do durability testing uh so yeah come on back and uh get your durability update but Boy, oh boy, is this a great rig. We flew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight batteries on it. Probably had three pretty hard hits upstairs on the, um, on the, uh, on the hardwood. Uh, hits that would have broken plenty of other bind and fly tiny whoops. Uh, so yeah, I, my suspicion is that this is going to be plenty durable. Great job, Happy Model. Thank you. Thank you for making something with this much power that's this light. Um, cannot wait for a motor plug version of this. Uh, fantastic job. Damn. <laughs> wow. Uh, Brad Mondin says, Nick Burns is saying this is going to be 115 bucks. Super, 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 super worth it at that price. Uh, thanks for hanging, my friends. I'll be back on Friday at seven o'clock. Uh, we'll we'll look more at these GemFan 1219s's. Uh, we'll fly this a bunch more. Maybe we'll do the prop comparison on this rig. Although that's probably not a good idea because I'm really not used to this rig yet. If if I'm gonna do comparisons, um, I like to use the 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 build that I've flown the most. Um, oh hey, something in Nick Burns's review. He did have one of the motors come. Uh, one of the motor wires broke off that was direct soldered. Uh, I've been totally fine with this one. There is plenty of slack on the motor wires, so it's not something that like concerns me. If the motor wires are really tight when you crash and the and the frame bends like this, it can potentially yank a motor wire out. Uh, but yeah, they've got plenty of slack on these motor wires, so I, I wouldn't think that that's why. Uh, Could have been a total fluke, but yeah. Watch Nick's review. He did a great job hitting all the details and whatnot. Uh, thanks for hanging, my friends. Here comes a little bit more RC drift car chasing. Hope to see you back on Friday. And I hope that you enjoyed.
I certainly enjoyed it. I had a blast flying this thing tonight, and that's that is high praise for me, man. I'm a I am a picky SOB. Come on, open. Wait, no, I'm gonna play you the uh, I'm gonna play you the uh, the uh, RC drift car edit that I just finished up, just without the. Uh, what the hell happened there? Without the music, you're you're gonna have the wrong music here, but that's that's okay. Oh, uh, and it's gonna be all small. Nah, I'll play you some raw flight footage. Thanks for hanging, my friends. Take care of yourselves. Keep an eye on your mental health. Just because you're a man doesn't mean that you're invincible. Be good. Oh, hold on. This is a bad battery. Not a bad battery. It's just an un uninteresting battery. Is this a good one? This should be a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's some good chasing in here. Oh, hey, the transmitter's still on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Computer, come on. Work with me here. Work with me here. There we go. See you later, friends. Be good. See you if you like these live streams and want to see them continue. This is a completely crowdfunded thing that I got going here. It'll cost you three whole dollars a month. That's 10 cents a day to jump onto my Patreon. Tons of benefits. Uh, uh, unlisted playlist on YouTube with like 80 some odd videos. Sketchy flying. Stuff I don't want to be public. Half done edits. Patreon only live streams. Uh, there's an Etsy store with some fun stuff you can buy. There's a Teespring shop over on CIDFPV.com. Links to everything and a whole bunch of affiliate links. When you're doing orders on uh, websites at this point, you should be using someone's affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything, and it makes them money so that they can support themselves and make more free stuff for you to watch on YouTube. I love you. Bye-bye.